Get it in there. Yeah, I can. <laughs> the time? It's fine. All right. Uh, this is uh, we're going to call to order a workshop for the uh, City of Holiday Island uh, um, City Council. Um, this is a workshop on uh, discussing a draft of Title V of Health and Sanitation uh, uh, proposed Health and Sanitation Ordinances. Let's start out by uh, we don't have the Pledge of Allegiance on the agenda, but we're going to do it anyway. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, Wes went over to run copies of stuff. Um, for himself, so he'll be back. I guess I can call attendance. Councilman Dumas? Here. Councilman Graves? Here. Councilman Mills? Here. Councilman Pittman? Here. Councilman? Elwood. Uh, Elwood? Here. Here. <laughs> I would have thought of it. Uh, the uh, yeah, the entire council is present for the workshop. Um, I'm going to let me start out by just setting the stage for the workshop here. Uh, the objective of the workshop is to gather information. No action will be taken. Uh, and uh, any draft as presented does not imply approval or concurrence of the city council. So I just wanted to make sure everybody knew that what we're going to be discussing today is just for discussion purposes only. Any action that will be taken will be taken in our actual council meeting at some future date. We're here to gather information and try to put together the best health and sanitation ordinances we can. Um, with that said, um, the uh, the elephant in the room in the uh, Title five is uh, trash collection. Uh, people have pretty strong opinions about trash collection. We have had um, historically, it, it's been up to the property owners uh, and residents to find a uh, trash collection service. There are, I believe, four at the present time that operate in Holiday Island, and. Um, and of course, for you know, for um, law-abiding citizens, that has worked out uh, quite well. Problem is, not everybody is a law-abiding citizen. So um, I just wrote down a couple of uh, you know objectives that that I have as mayor of what we want, what I want to see in the uh, in the sanitation portion of the health and sanitation. Uh, ordinance and uh, first and foremost we need to comply with the law secondly we need to eliminate illegal dumping and trash burning in holiday island which is a growing problem we need to minimize wear and tear on the roads and we need to provide a mechanism for illegal dump site cleanup if there is a uh, if there is a problem a secondary um, objective would be to minimize the number of days a week that trash collection containers are sitting at the end of the streets or at the ends of the driveways. Uh, other people may have other goals and objectives, but those are the ones that um, I had in mind when taking a look at the draft of the, of the ordinance. So um, with that in mind, you know, as far as complying with the law, uh, I guess I would I could re review two different sections of code that uh, I'm primarily you know concerned with. One is Arkansas uh, Code 
and dated 8-6-202, uh, which is um, uh, which states it is the purpose of this subchapter, and it's and it is declared to be a policy of this state to regulate the collection and disposal of solid waste in a manner that will protect the public health and welfare, prevent water and air pollution, prevent and spread the spread of disease and the creation of nuisances, conserve natural resources, and enhance the beauty and quality of the environment. So those are the stated objectives of the state of Arkansas relative to um, solid waste disposal, collection and disposal. Um, there's a whole section of code relative to this covering the responsibilities of local municipalities, counties, and, and the state, um, federal regulations, uh, environmental regulations. Um, you, you, know, you could spend a week just collecting um, information on all of the codes that apply when it comes to solid waste collection and disposal. But the one that you know specifically impacts cities is 8-6-211, which is municipal solid waste management systems. I'll just read section A again of a lengthy uh, section of code. All municipalities shall provide a solid waste management system, which will adequately provide for the collection and disposal of all solid waste generated or exist existing within the incorporated limits of the municipality or in the area to be served and, and in accordance with the rules and orders of the Arkansas Pollution Control and Ecology Commission. The governing body of the municipality may enter into agreements with one or more municipalities, counties, or regional solid waste management districts, private persons, or trusts, or with any combination thereof to provide a solid waste management system or any part of a system for the municipality, but the agreement shall not relieve the parties of the responsibility under this subchapter. So in a nutshell, what that says is that um, as a city, we could continue to do what we're doing. We could continue to let four um, companies um, operate in Holiday Island, but in the final analysis, we are responsible for what they do. Just because we allow them to operate doesn't mean that we can shift the responsibility for what they do and how they operate to them. Uh, so one of the concerns that you know we would have as a city is um, what kind of resources do we have to follow up behind people, you know, anybody that's operating in the city to make sure that they're complying with a stack of you know, environmental regulations this, this high that we have no expertise in. So, um, so that's, that's kind of where, where my thinking is when, we, uh, when I approached uh, drafting this ordinance. Um, first up on the agenda is, uh, I said, I listed it as a question and answer with George Wolfright from Carroll County Solid Waste. So George, yes. um, why don't you come up, uh, I think you could sit by the table there and... Okay, I would, uh, I would like to bring Gary and April with me. Okay. And the reason uh, <laughs> I want to bring them with me. Bigger target, yeah. more <laughs> targets. <laughs> <laughs> More targets, but no, uh, I am uh, George Bowright, Director of Carroll County Solid Waste District. Carroll County Solid Waste, uh, this is Gary Gray, uh, Director of District Operations, and April Shaw. Also, in a, in a sense, she is a Director of the Company, too. She's over the Finance and Administration part of the Company. Uh, together, the three of us uh, are the top heads, the top people, Carroll County Solid Waste District. Carroll County Solid Waste became a district in July of 2020. Uh, Just hang on one second, George. Is, uh, can, is, that, is the mic picking this up? BJ, can you hear? 
The speaker. Yes. Okay. okay. All right. In July of 2020, we became ADQ, uh, permitted us to become a district. Uh, and you don't, they just don't allow anybody. We became the 19th district in Arkansas, a single county district uh, consisting only of Carroll County. Uh, ADQ just don't allow anyone to become a district. You've got to uh, qualify in a sense to become that district. Uh, we qualified by doing that uh, for promoting recycling. We actually recycled and Gary can tell you what we bring through our recycling center in our processing center and in a year, we recycle the more than the city of uh, Little Rock does. We promote recycling. We've got an educational uh, trailer that we use to go around to the schools and, and whoever wants to, wants us to uh, accommodate them with this. But we're, What's good about us becoming a district is we, we care about Carroll County. We want to provide the best service for Carroll County that we, that we can. Uh, we want to take care of the, the refuse and the recycling needs of the citizens of Carroll County. Uh, then you wanted me to talk a little bit about the, the benefits of a of a single hauler in a, in a community. Uh, there are a lot of benefits to having just a single hauler in the community. Uh, as far as Carroll County Solid Waste District, uh, the, the community uh, of Holiday Island is within our, our district. Uh, Mayor Dan actually sits on our board, uh, Carroll County Solid Waste District's board, is a board member, or a voting board member. Uh, so in a sense, we, he has control of what we do? Yes, and, and, and that's why I'm saying that. In a sense, Dan has a, a vote in, in controlling on, on what we do. The, let, let, let me... Uh, you know, just a, as a matter of full disclosure, I probably should have said that going in, that I do sit on the board of Carroll Carol County Solid Waste, uh, and I am a voting member on that board. However, I will not have a vote when it comes to passing the ordinance that we're discussing here. So um, I don't feel like I have that conflict of interest. <coughs> and it's up to the it's up to the city council to pass the ordinance. Aren't you on that board by virtue of being the mayor of the city, and not for any other reason? Yes. Um, not necessarily. Okay. Uh, and George can explain this, but the, the 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 district was formed by the three um, um, class one cities in um, in the county, and then in addition to that, uh, because they also serve the large rural area. They had more or less at large members on the board that represented rural areas. Holiday Island um, had a representative on that board, but the representative represented Holiday Island as a rural, as part of the rural area, not part of the city. Um, when we incorporated, it just, um, uh, Doug Taylor was the representative for Holiday Island. He and I discussed it, and he thought that it would be better for um, for me as the mayor to be on that board. Um, however, I believe that Doug ended up remaining on the board as an at-large rural member anyway. Yes. So he and I both now are are on the board. But um, yeah, the the um, I offered to you know to sit on the board, and they. There are, uh, as I was saying, there's many benefits to having a single hauler in your community. Uh, less traffic from a trash truck on the, on the roads. Uh, right now, I believe, uh, I believe three days a week here in Holiday Island, 
you guys have us and you'll have ACE one day and you'll have uh, uh, maybe uh, Waste Management Republic uh, one day and maybe Osage and maybe some more haulers. Uh, but the with a single hauler, uh, and Holiday Island is more than likely going to need to be, uh, from the studies that I've done, set up on two different days because of the vast majority of it, because we've got, we've got the rest of the counties that we do too. But uh, Carroll County Solid Waste uses single axle trucks. Now there's a single axle truck versus a, a twin axle truck in, in the rear of the truck. There's benefits to both of those sides, but on chip and seal highways, the single axle is better. Uh, when you turn a double axle truck, it seems to roll the chip and seal, uh, and the single axle does not. Uh, but the single axle will uh, seem to groove the pavement more because it's a single axle and there's more weight on that axle. But what Holiday Island or Carroll County Solid Waste does is we use smaller trucks, what we call pack rat trucks, they're uh, smaller like a U-Haul type truck, that we run down a lot of the roads and we try to keep our big trucks on the main roads uh, and use these smaller trucks for a satellite truck uh, to keep them off the smaller roads and from turning around in the cul-de-sacs. Yes, sir. So, <clears throat> so Right now you're on our roads three days a week. No, right now we're on your roads one, one day. day a week. Okay. Yes. And you're go to <clears throat> we have Over approximately two. 900 customers in the in the Holiday Island area, uh, but we we have customers. We run routes every day of the week. Uh, it will the vast. I, Dan, is it around 1,400 someone? Uh, now that you've become a city, 1500. Uh, I'm running right now on one day a week to pick up the 900 customers. I'm running, and this is not counting my recycling trucks, but my recycling trucks are pickups and smaller trucks. I'm running three, uh, three, four trash trucks on Wednesday out here, three big trucks and a, a uh, pack rat truck to do it on Wednesday to add the other to add the other Holiday Island residents to that I would need to I would need to uh, bring in a, incorporate another day in that now with me incorporating another day though I would run portions of the town the one day and portions the other day we wouldn't be running back over uh, the, uh, same the same area. portion the same area and it wouldn't take you said you got 900 customers here. Right we now. have approximately 900. So, you know, you, it, it wouldn't take, you know, it wouldn't take a third to get as much time to pick up the rest of them uh, or 40% more time to pick up the rest of them because you're driving right past houses that, you know. That is that, correct, you know, yes. You could just stop. We're, we're passing stop a lot of these house houses now. Yeah, the, those uh, big trucks that the waste management has. Yes. Uh, they chipped and sealed my road one year, and, and within a year it was gone. I mean, it just I had to load two two people on a road a week, and, and it was mm -hmm. so they chipped and sealed a lot of trucks. They seem to do a lot more damage. And that's the uh, you know that's just it. You with multiple haulers you know you may have some you may have somebody on the road that's got us and then they may have waste management down at the end where that waste management truck's going to have to run that whole road mm -hmm. to get down to their customer the uh, yeah the, the type of truck i think has a bearing on it but i think more than anything it's the fact that you have four haulers Let's assume that each one of them has 25% of the business. That, you know, there's four trucks going past these houses every, you know, at, at least once a week. Well, and uh, those great big 
Yeah, mm -hmm. picking up on one and then driving past three, picking up one, driving past three. And, you know, it, it's it's in reality, it's four times the wear and tear on the roads than what you'd have if you had one home. You're going to be able to do the island in two days? Uh, yes. Uh, different parts of the island. Uh, well, right, yeah, the island, as far as the island oh, itself. Oh, I mean, holiday island, okay. not, not just. Okay, yes, I, yes, with, uh, if there's around 14, 1500, uh, yes, in, in um, two days. What about the commercial? The commercial would be in with that. We, we yeah. would, uh, it would be in on that day. I, I'm sure you want to touch it. I don't want to steal your thunder. You're going to touch on this. With my background, I, in the past, have had to handle the liability of one of our insurers in a super fund site. And I know that that type of situation is joint in several. So can you kind of touch on why you would, it would be safer to go with you than some place, people we don't know where their trash is going? We're, we're a, like I said, we're a district and we're ADQ licensed. You know, we have a, a transfer stations license. We have, we're environmental officers. We're licensed under ADQ, me and George. As environmental officers, so I mean, we follow every strict no, I, rule. I, I know that's kind of not my point. My point is, as, as you can find out, if you're a small business owner, uh, you could put a battery and have somebody haul it off and it gets in the Superfund site, and you're joint and severally liable for the whole thing. Okay. It doesn't matter that you didn't do it. That's that's the area that I wanted you to okay. kind of. Let me, is it okay? Let it yes. Okay. I think what you're asking is. The liability for holiday. I, I, I know the answer. I want you to. Yes. Okay. I'm just trying to make sure I'm understanding. Okay. Right. We are insured. Okay. Both vehicle, transfer station, we have inspectors. Uh, we take it to a permitted landfill that's in Tommy Town that is, you know, it, it's inspected quarterly. As, and we have to, part of our permitting at the transfer is we have to have a class C operator on site at all times that the transfer is open. That inspects loads. They have to verify what's being dealt. Okay? If there's a battery that gets in there or a tire that is in that trash, that class C operator has to make sure that, that is removed and not. Now, as far as the liability, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, once we or the solid waste hauler picks up the trash, that does become ours. You are not mistaken. Yes, it, it's, so no, it's you're, our you're liability. No I'm mind. thinking about it from the other direction. I don't know if everybody realizes that if they do not use a service like yours and it gets into the wrong place, they're responsible, even though they had nothing to do with where it went. Or how it got there and didn't have any. There's Ill there's illegal dumps that are cleaned up and they find names in there and like you said there's exactly what they, I that, uh, they, can find they my say well I haul who I, I, I paid whoever to haul my stuff up. Well the dump's your problem now. Yeah, we and, have run you know, we run into stuff like yeah, that. I have too. I have to they they had they actually contracted with somebody else and we found we were told about an illegal dump when we <laughs> went to check it. It had their name and stuff in it, and they said, "Well, we contracted with them. We do not penalize or go after them. All we can mostly do is excise caution." But under ADEQ rules, under Arkansas Department of Environmental Quality, it is the person's responsibility. The, 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 you know, the story I had, and just it, as an aside, I had a small gas station in Sherman, Georgia whose service went on strike and they hired somebody else mm -hmm. for about three days to haul off some stuff. It ended up in a super fun site and I'm going to a mediation uh, and I'm saying, well, we've got a small part of this. Our attorney said, well, no, this is joint and several liability. You owe the same amount that Exxon does. Yep. Yes. Holy crap, you know. But yeah. I, and from our standpoint, yes. that alleviates our liability and also yes. other citizens Sure. And that's, I'm not sure everybody understands and we're, we're, and we are how dangerous that can be. We're held to a lot higher standard than just a trash company. I mean, yes, we are, but we are also, we license any small hauler in our yeah. district. 
we license. They got to go through us to get their licensing and and they've got to follow ADEQ regulations and all that too, but we will, uh, you know, we, if, if they break the law or do anything wrong, we pull their license uh, as a district or license to us. And, and we will, we make them hold up to that standard, not saying they're not gonna do that, but it would be, it would be us uh, because we are environmental officers uh, licensed to ADEQ uh, to investigate uh, any wrongdoing and to, and to follow up, write tickets, even take the district court. Does that does that answer your question? Yeah, I, no, I kind of already knew the question answer. I just wanted, okay. wanted do, to do, answer. do all of the haulers. You know, you said that that uh, anybody that wants to pick up trash in Carroll County, including Holloway Island, they have to come to you to get a license. Yes. Yes, they have and to be permitted through ADQ and we license right. them through but, our district. But they're not required to bring the trash they pick up to your transfer station, right? Correct. Uh, no, but not, they, you have to report it quarterly yes. mm -hmm. and pay the ticket whether they take it out of state or out of district. Right. Not required, no. Uh, as a district, as the director of a district, anything in Carroll County, I can force them to bring to our transfer station. Mm -hmm. I, I don't. Uh, so they are not, not required, no, but there is a provision in there where, yes, I can, if I say you gotta take what you pick up in Carroll County to my transfer station, uh, I can't. That, that's that. my concern is that uh, that um, we don't have to worry about the people that follow the law. <laughs> we have to worry about the people that don't. Yes. And, uh, yeah, let me tell you something. And, and the, you know, the, art, the, the statute clearly says that the city is ultimately responsible. And uh, so, um, if if somebody and I'm not I'm not saying that anybody that's doing this today I'm not saying that anybody is doing this today I'm just saying that somebody you know it, somebody the potential is there there is a poten potential today that somebody would start up a business a trash collection business they'd go to you they'd get their license and everything else they'd start picking up trash it, but they they would opt not to take it to your transfer station, but they would take it someplace else and dump it. And then all of a sudden, you know, 10 years down the road, we find out that there's a uh, illegal trash dump somewhere, maybe a Superfund site that needs to be cleaned up. Who's responsible? The city of Holiday Island, because we allowed it to happen. And, you know, and I'm, I'm you know, saying that we're not going to have the resources to be able to follow up behind several companies to make sure they're complying with the law. That's that's my main concern with having multiple carriers. But it, I, it I, I have had be. experience with that, not as yeah. a not as a elected official or anything, but when we lived in Missouri, we lived out in a subdivision out in the county. And uh, there was a, a, there were two um, trash haulers in that, that would service our subdivision. Um, one of them was legitimate, the other one was not so much. And he would, he would pick up trash and he'd take it back to his place out in the country. He'd dump it all out on the ground and then start sorting through it to see if there was anything in there that he could sell for scrap iron or you know make a little extra money off of and the rest of it just laid there and it became a big open yeah. uh, garbage dump we have and, one of those uh, on holiday island right now okay. i'm i am sure mm -hmm. and i can give you the address yeah. and it's Dogwood yeah. lane number one Please. And I issued a citation yesterday. Yeah, yeah. You did? Yes. I'm telling you right now, I have 
It was bad. Well, it's not just bad. We live next door. Right? Okay. Um, and it's not even just a matter of the trash. They have three dogs running loose, all puppies. They have a great day running yeah. loose. They have a back porch where the great name just poops out there. It's covered in stool. Yeah, you know, I have photos of all this. I have sat out on my back porch to have a cup of coffee in the morning and looked over and seen a gentleman on the top of the deck taking a shit off the back of the deck. Um, <laughs> you know, let's, so if you want to talk about trash, we have it in about, Holiday Island. I know about that. That but, uh, is a dump right there. Yeah. Well, uh, there, there's is, two different there's two different issues. There's people. You know, property owners or residents illegally dumping in their own yes. yard or in the neighbor's yard. Uh, and then there's, you know, uh, commercial haulers that we would have to police to make to sure. To me, if it's and the same amount, yeah. it doesn't matter. I mean, and anything, anything, anything to do with solid waste, we are authorized to issue. And as a district, me and Gary take this seriously. Yeah. Uh, Mayor Dan told us about this and, and we, the two addresses we took care of yesterday. So what's uh, the process after you yes. Yes. Um, I issued, I issued him a citation to his face. Uh, they uh, said they will comply. I gave them 30 days. They do not comply. I, t I contact the prosecuting attorney and we go to court. And uh, believe it or not, we've never had one go to court. I mean, because the fines are there. When ADQ gets involved, they're insane. I mean, they're not little. $10,000. Yeah, they're not little few hundred dollars. I haven't seen anything like this on Holiday Island. Yeah. It's the worst I've ever we, seen. We visited yeah. yesterday. And I mean, yeah. he, yes, we. We issued a citation and they said they'll comply. We'll see. Yeah. But if not, we well, can take we, we can take it to court. If they don't comply, we will. And our sheriff and our prosecutors it. seem to be on board with they us. Back I mean, it, it seems like and it's I know working. This is off the subject, but what do we do about free running dogs? That's that's uh, that's another workshop. <laughs> <laughs> Got a lot of code. <laughs> yeah. I have a question. What uh, what legal authority do you have over a Missouri collection service that would be collecting in Holiday Island? They have to if they're collecting they in Carroll County. On what they pick up in Carroll County, if they're coming in Carroll County and picking up trash, say eight. Um, I don't know the name. also. They are licensed in Carroll County, <laughs> or they can't come in Carroll County with it. So if they do something wrong, do you have anything wrong as a district? Yes. Can we hold it down? This is a recorded workshop, so if if there's background chatter, the mic won't pick up the people that need to be recorded. So if they do something wrong, what legal authority do you have as a district over them if their business is in Missouri? We can keep them from collecting in Carroll County. We can, yeah, that's okay. basically about the only thing we can do. We can okay. keep them collecting now. There are we, fines. Okay. They are fines. Uh, because they made Ace, agreements with you uh, to operate under certain terms and conditions. Is that you can find them? Okay. You know, the Missouri borders Carroll County. Right. We're not going to keep Carroll County uniform unless we can keep the surrounding area also. So, you know, we're concerned. And I don't, you know, I'm not here to talk trash about any other trash haulers or anything. <laughs> but uh, Ace. When Ace was caught burning and, and dumping up iron burning on his place, uh, you know, we got Missouri ADEQ involved and uh, and they took care of that. Okay. Uh, the Missouri DEQ, anyway. What about so the, we are concerned about what happens outside and the haulers that come into Carroll County, too. But as far as licensing, we can only restrict what they do in Carroll County. Okay. What can you do as an agency or a district to help us with the Missouri side of the border and dumping that appears to be illegal to me? What can you do about that for us? It's a different agency. It's MORA. We have ADEQ in Arkansas. In Missouri, we have MORA. And uh, I really don't know. I mean, we haven't dealt a whole lot with them, have we? The ACE was the only one that I... Can you work with Missouri? Oh, to resolve yes. the issue? Yes, they would work with us. They did in that case. They worked with us. Uh, they resolved it. Uh, Missouri has different laws than us, too. I mean, it's kind of... Uh, I live up by Blue Eye area, and right across the border in Missouri, their fire chief says, pile your stuff up there and burn it. It's no big deal. In Arkansas, it's illegal. You know, so, I mean, Missouri is... They do have different rules than us, you know. Yes, sir. Um, 
I guess probably 10 or 15 years ago when you guys first started servicing Holiday Island. Um, we were trying, and we're here, uh, we were in the process of trying to make it mandatory. And one of the big issues that we're going to have in trying to do that is part time people. How, how do you how do you deal with you know we I've got three people on my street that are part time residents. April, uh, why don't you stand up and help us out on this? I mean, the basically, uh, you know, it'd be if we're of, in as a single hauler, though, uh, you know, you guys are going, you guys are going to want. Uh, it depends on what Holiday Island wants. That's what I was going to say. It's kind it, of it just, you know, it's how it. you want your how you want your contract set up. Eureka Springs, they're required to. It doesn't matter vacation if you're a resident there. You're required to have trash service. But I mean, it depends on what y'all want, really. April, you want that you, kind you of. You have other plans, is what I think he's getting at. I also have somebody on my neighbor that's probably there five weekends a year. A little harsh to make them pay pay the same monthly fee that I do for trash pickup every week. I mean, this when, this when, is when, this is going to be a yes. When, when we get into yes, it, this you're is absolutely a correct. I do the building. Um, I know exactly what you're talking about. West County over there around the lake, Hollow Valley. A lot of them are, this is their second home. Right. So when it's nice weather, they'll be down here for a couple of weeks, a month, two months. Bottom line, it is what you have. It really, it really what is. What can you do? Give us some options. Uh, you can, okay. Oh, what okay. you can do is you can do like a two bag service. Call us when you're here. We'll open it back up, charge you. Call us when you leave, we'll close it. But it depends okay. on what y'all want. That's one way. Second way, we can do a minimal monthly charge, whether you're here or not. Because that would be the standard. Uh, part timers used to be one of the bigger offenders because you know they show up a weekend now, and yeah. a weekend three months from now. Exactly. And they got all. They generate all this trash, and they got no place to put it. So they. They figure out where to put it. Yeah. I had, yeah. I had a place over in Northeast Arkansas, and it was sort of the same way. And they, and I know y'all want to do it, they put it on our assessment, they charge us six months to there or not. Because I explained to my work with the trash company, and we disconnect and all that. They're like, now nah, you have to pay six months. So it's really whatever y'all, whatever y'all. Yeah. So you, um, what they did, I, I visited a few weekends in the summer. You, they charged me six months of service, I could put it out when I was there. So it's really whatever y'all want. You have, you have, um, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use a, a reference again. When we lived in Michigan, um, all you, you, you bought, um, you bought bags from the city. The bags had specific markings on them for, for garbage. You could generate as much garbage as you wanted to, as long as you were willing to keep buying bags. Sure. But you couldn't put anything out on the curb that wasn't in a city bag. Sure. And uh, you know, for, so for part timers, you know, they could just buy bags. Yeah, we have bag bags. And when they're here, they use up one of their bags, and when they need more, they they get more. That will work for fifty percent or sixty percent of the people. The other ones are saying, "Hang on, well, we, we issue, we issue fine." Well, how, how are you going to find them? You, you can charge a minimal service though, and when they're here, we'll pick it up. You know, I mean, I mean that, yeah, it's really what's. Yeah, it's. I mean, see. I, I don't know. think the bag thing works. Did you charge for the bags? <laughs> the bag thing also. What's keeping people from other cities from getting out of the bags and setting them out? Here? I mean, well, well I know the bag thing. Well, I'll tell you what they do. I had I had a condo here that was a part time home for two years until we moved permanently, and we we had trash service, and there were uh, there weren't months, but there were several weeks in between us being here, and uh, if, if we left it out for for a collection day here, we had one of the neighbors take it back behind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when we came back two weeks later or whatever. It'd be full. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It would be full of people from other condos. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Illegal dumping is a serious issue. Uh -huh. And the thing about the bags, I like to her point, if if you leave trash bags 
for any length of time. The dogs. I, I, I just, I, I've never seen so many dogs. Well, they, they supply the dogs and the trash home when I'm you know, I mean, it's a no-win situation yeah, there. Yeah. I mean, you come to get the trash, take the dog too. Yeah, please, would you? Please. So if, they're, if, they're required to, if they're required to have the service, you know, maybe I think maybe the, a minimum fee. I think a minimum, minimum fee. Thing. A minimum yeah. fee, and then when they're here, they call us, and we pick up the stuff. I mean. I know there are, I want to three or four, maybe. We got a lot of it, from it, Tulsa. It, and B's now, too. Yeah, yeah, from Tulsa that over in West County around the lake, that's their like second home. And it, several years ago, when we first started doing it because it became an issue, and, we charged them up like $5 a month. All I know is when so, I was on the DLC, we were trying to put it in mandatory, and that's the pushback we got for the Yeah. See, and you, you, you got your weekend, and it's kind of a little unfair. They pay it regardless, don't they? I mean, if yeah. they have water, they have to have trash. It don't matter if you're there, it well, don't matter if you're putting out. Do you, how do you, uh, it's probably on a volunteer basis out on uh, Beaver Lake, because they got a lot of part time people. Here. Yeah, that's what I was saying. It's, it's, you know, y'all make the mandatory is a little different. It depends yeah. on, you know, most of it is just tell us when you're here, I'll reopen it. You're charged based on how long you're here, and then you close it. Okay. So, so we get a lot of phone calls. And then maybe, maybe they pay minimal during the. Uh, Really, so, this, so, this, so we get into this, you're going to give us the option to. It's totally up to how. Yeah, the, <coughs> the separate the separate option. from the, you know, the, the contract, whatever, whatever contract we end up with, with, with whatever carrier. Um, we have contracts with four cities. We'll be there. part of the they are. Uh, You know, the old 80, 20 or probably better than that, or probably 90, 10 or 95, 5. You know, the majority of people will do what's right. Mm -hmm. you got I'll always, yeah. always. Well, I think that's why you have to have some sort of minimum for each water meter. I, I, I like uh, that idea. Yeah. But but it should be fairly low to allow those really part time to part time. Yeah, I, you know, I got, yeah. I got uh, people get part time. And collected, sure. but also. And we can do it's, it's whatever rule y'all make. So if, the system. if they're yeah. paying that minimal, we don't pick them up to like oh, what's whatever y'all decide. I mean, well, yeah. you just pick it up when it's out there. But, well, then, then they'll then you get someone that pays minimal and they're sitting out every week. We wouldn't know. Well, I mean, it yeah, just, because I don't you know. got a neighbor that was set out there or yeah, someone coming out of town. Yeah. And you know, people bought the house down the road from us. Lake Charles, right? I guess they were about five or six times a year. Yeah. What about bulk pickup? Once a year. Once a year. Well, now that's on my spring, and I, I wanted to let you guys know uh, while I was in here, our spring bulky cleanup that we do for free. I'd like to do that first Saturday, if you guys will approve that of May this year. The one I'd like to schedule that. And but, that's for all our friends. Uh, but that now, let's say bulky pickup uh, through the year though. Uh, if you don't want to wait for that and you've got it's something cool. like a couch you want to out, you call the office, we make a work order mm -hmm. and yeah, we good. charge them and, and our driver picks up. Yeah, they, so that, that, that service is available now? Oh, yes. yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, that's, that's yeah. what I wanted to know. Yes, to yeah. all yeah. our customers. If, 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 if there are the customers now and they call and say, hey, I got a couch out there, we'll grab it. Yeah. You know, if they, if they don't call and just sit at the curb, we usually don't. But, I mean, call, call we and tell us, we'll pick it up. But it depends on what the item is and if there's two two people. Because I'm I, I'm not comfortable doing a work order for just the driver to pick up a full size couch. Uh, That's dangerous. To me. I, I read down through this someplace and then you know the bulk pickup applicable residences that are allowed two curbside bulk two collection for your for pickup apartment complexes other than multiple family housing units consisted are not eligible. Uh, that you know, we've got some apartments and we've got townhouses. Got it. We have a we have a transfer station variable they take it to any time. But but uh, it, we well, usually don't have apartments, and the reason is, I mean, <laughs> you, I know, but each one of them has a water meter, so they already right. Yeah. Each each apartment, each townhouse, condo, got a water meter, so they're paying. 
So I, I don't see how you can exclude them from the policy. Oh, that would be individual because they we pick up their dumpster every 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 week. I mean, I, I, what do we get? I missed something. What about both the items, the bulky cleanups at apartments and townhouses and stuff. Oh, that one has. I mean, you can look out the door and see that. We got eight plexes, four plexes. Right here, we are busy. No, it's cool. It's just like, it's just like when we do green floors clean up. Really at the commercial places, we don't pick up. We don't pick up the stuff. You know, they're well, they're running a business. That's part of their business. Townhouse. Yeah. The townhouse associations have, you know, the people pay a monthly fee and and that trash collection is included in it. So I, I don't know. Because there's a limit limit of an amount, you know, like they're paying for a dumpster, we pick up that dumpster every week. But you know, the way the way I see it, it may be wrong, it like we do the cleanups in Green Forest and everywhere else, the apartments we skip. Because if we didn't, there'd be a pile out there bigger than our truck of everything people collected during the I, I don't know. I, I it's see It's part that. of their business. It's part of their business. It's kind of. I, I see that as a pushback that we're going to probably get. Yeah. You know, from, uh, what did you, when you do your uh, spring and fall or whatever you're going to do this year, yeah. I think we're, that you wouldn't pick up at apartments. We, we haven't. No, that we haven't in the past. I think this is something we'd probably need to talk Why about. Why would there be pushback now? Is there pushback? Now. We haven't picked up from businesses in the past. We say if it's commercial and, and apartments and stuff are commercial, you know, if somebody leaves and leaves all their couches and all their furniture and stuff, that's just part of their, that's an expense they're going to have to pay but for the business. Can you deny me if I pay we will pick it up, you know, like if they, if they, if they set here. it out there at the dumpster and call and say, hey, a resident moved out, they left a bunch of stuff, we'll pick it up and charge them. Yeah. Okay. As a resident, you know. all right, in an apartment building, how can you say, no? No. Okay. Well, we, you distinguish yeah. condos and townhouses from apartment buildings. Okay. Yeah. All right. I didn't no, know. Now, right now, a condo is a townhouse. I think these condo packs, associations. That's really are, just. Say that again. A duplex or something like that. That's really just two residents. Right. Uh, that's not a, a business. Okay. And uh, now, I, so as operations manager, when we come out here to haul down, we got everything unless it was like a business store. Yeah. Uh, the uh, church. Uh, a church. Uh, everything else. Houses. I mean, all Kids these apartments and big businesses, we would get. Okay. If, if they was our customer. If they were our customer. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but what we didn't do was like a gas station, a uh, a hotel, mm -hmm. a a business. And you know, and I say nobody in holiday ought to do it, but if you offer that to them, They'll yeah. save up their trash for the whole year until we have our cleanup, and there'll be something out there the size of two trash trucks. We just picked every day. Well, or if you do a whole thing yeah. or something, you know, they will. They might be wanting to change out. They don't want to take care of it, you know. And the cleanup actually cost us the yearly cleanups we do for free cost us twenty thousand dollars. Is what it cost. That's what we spent last year on cleanups twenty twenty thousand. Yeah. One of the things I, I think about is we've got a lot of elderly people out here, including many of us. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, that that are not capable of moving the stuff out of their house or out of their yard or in, to the street even. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know some dependent upon Ace because Ace they would call Ace. They would actually come up to the garage, pick something up, take it to their truck when they wanted it hauled off. And that was one of the things they really liked about Ace. Yeah. We uh, do. Elderly handicapped, yeah. But we will not go in your resident and get something. Yeah, we won't. Well, but if you got it yeah, on the outside of the church. residence, yeah, we, we already have that. Yeah, we go. We go. We go. We go. You say, hey, uh, how far as I can get it to my garage door, we'll grab it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I was thinking, if you didn't offer that, they're going to hire oh, some to. guy down the street with a truck. Yeah. Come get it, and no tell them where that's going to end up. That's correct. Now, we no. do that for the cities. Yeah, we've always We do it. that for the county. One, one other question that I thought it pleased with a lot of people. Um, and I, I've had Carroll County Waste for 15 years, I guess, whenever they, we finally talked to you guys. Uh, what, is it, what is Richard's name? Roger. Roger Miner. Now, who was the first director? Well, the first oh, uh, one, Brian McKenna. Brian McKenna. Brian McKenna. And then it was Roger Miner. We never Roger came out here until Roger Miner. 
Okay. Right. Well, anyway, the guy I was dealing with is one that was a state representative and he became Bill Jackson. Bill Jackson. Bill Jackson. Okay, now you got it. <laughs> that's the third one. Okay, I, I dealt with Bill Jackson quite a bit. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he wasn't going to take on Holiday Island unless it was uh, universal or whatever he was referring to. You know, we had to have that. that you know, our, uh, you know, everybody. Uh, we're we're actually them. growing as a percentage wise, we're growing more in Holiday Island than we are anywhere else. Anyway. Well, I think most of the new people yeah. that are moving in you know, go with you guys. Um, and what, my, what I, the original question is I, I've got to, I pay now uh, what a percentage when we go to the What's the term I want? Universal. Uh, exclusive holiday. Exclu there you go. Exclusive contract with you. What kind of redu reduction in, in rates are we going to see? Well, we looked at, at rates right now. Uh, when we first started coming out here, our Phil had the rates set. And when we gained a certain amount of customer, Phil actually lowered the rates uh, as director. Uh, not a big percentage, but he lowered them because we were getting more customers and it was costing us less to come out here. We were Maybe making, making more. more stops. Now, yeah. as a, uh, we, we had you guys right now at a pretty good rate. Now, if we get it exclusive with all the customers, that will lower. I've not, I've got to sit down and do some figuring, uh, you know, to see what that would be. Okay. Uh, but yes, it, it would, uh, as an exclusive contract, you guys signing a contract with us, it, it will lower. Uh, I've got a question about recycling. Uh, of the 900 customers now, how many are, are taking advantage of the recycling? Not a clue, but we offer it to everyone. In Holiday yeah. Island, most, yeah, of, we did, most of them. We, yeah, uh, we, we offer it to every one of them. Uh, but I really don't know how many participate. Yeah. I know it's a big crowd. In it's, Holiday Island, it's a big percentage. Y'all do more than... Oh, the yeah. truck that comes out here brings more to our recycling center than Eureka or Bearable. I'm going to I mean, say 90, 90 plus percent. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot. Our people in Holiday Island recycle for us. I'm sorry, I don't mean to push along here. I have to go to work. Um, first of all, what is the policy on dogs as it stands right now? We have no policy. Wow, okay. Because we haven't gotten to animal control yet and well, I didn't know if we had a previous order that's in place or not. No. Okay. So that is a big problem. Here. Well, 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 you, you got you, you got My other question is there's something in their covenants. How long does yeah. this process yeah. take as far as my neighbors and their trash? How long approximately how long will that process take? They have thirty days. They have thirty days to clean it up and then after that we turn it over to the prosecuting attorney and I don't know. Okay. Hopefully they hopefully they comply. So far, so far, everybody we've messed with complies, you know, and <laughs> some of them say, and I know it's your neighbor, but some of them, some of them, they'll start cleaning up, say, I couldn't get it in this 30 days. We'll give them 30 more. I mean, we, we would rather than comply than we've got to see them clean anyway before we would give them more. You know, once but, it goes to the uh, prosecutor attorney, I don't know. I really feel this case in 30 days, it will be cleaned up. And Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm just too much I talking to I look more at it as um, by the time you prosecute in part, they will have disappeared and it will be left that way, is my theory. And then, then we can issue a citation to the property owner. The bad thing is most of the property owners we issue them to out here live in some other state. They do. Yeah. And, she lives in Oklahoma, I believe. And, yeah. I mean, it's hard. Holla a little hard because I really, most of them that we've done in this area, they live in another state. Yeah. The only thing is, if you, if you Google the, uh, the street view of the address uh -huh. of the property owner of that property, it's the front, it's it's a bank. 
Really? So I don't know if the property is probably in default. Yeah. In foreclosure or or what? And again, but, and wow. we can we cannot do a thing about what somebody's property looks like. All we can do is household trash. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they can do whatever. That's not as far as old cars old, or something yeah. like that. Right. Yeah, yeah, we can't do nothing about that. I mean, if you see like what bags of trash. What concerns me is the animals it draws. Yeah, when we go out there and see the bags of trash and stuff like that, we can yes. do something. Everything else we Did can do. Did you look out back? Yes. Well, occupants were to move out and the property owner were to give us permission, couldn't we get a crew together and clean it up after the people leave if they left? Or what if they paid you know, fine? And, and I don't know if y'all ran into it yet, but a lot of the, yeah. like, we'll get complaints from Bearable or Green Forest or whatever, and I go and look at them, it's something I can't do nothing about, and then I usually call their code enforcement officer, and he takes them over. Um, but if there is, all we can do is the trash, honestly. Right. Yeah, like uh, there is a way for the, the, the city, and we don't, that's part of this, these ordinances, once, once we have the ordinances in place, and we have, have a code enforcement officer, we would have some recourse to go in and, and clean up property and charge it, put a lien against the property. Basically. But what, what about just, you know, if, if a bunch of neighbors got together and got the permission of the property owner to go clean it up because it was disgusting to them? At least they could. Yeah. So, I think there are You get a bunch of neighbors to clean it up. I, I understand we don't have the power to do anything until we have an ordinance on the books. All right. We don't have any legal power or authority over anything. There you but go. as an individual citizen or a group of citizens, if you got the property owner's permission and they were gone and the occupants weren't there. I'm on the how do we find the property owner's information? Oh, it's on the county tax right. rate. Okay. Yeah. If it's a bank or if it's an individual, you'll find it. Okay. Um, and is there anything that you've done about the dog feces on their back deck? I can smell it on my back porch. It is you can, you, if, you, if you can get the property owner, if, as long as the occupants aren't there. Yeah, it's, you know. it's uh, unreal. Yeah, I've had the health department. We've had VHS. I'm, I'm kind of surprised that the health department hasn't done something about it. Really? Yeah. 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 They, wow. They've been no yeah, when I went up there yesterday to the front door, it's covered in um, insulation. insulation, broke up insulation, pink. Insulation all across the porch, and these kids are in this. Yeah, we didn't see no kids, but but they DHS have. and the health department weren't we told that are, DHS was out there and they have DHS. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. Uh, they would call them again today. Just yes, maybe we yeah. have really tried, me and her, and the owner of our property who is right around the corner. and you know, and I can feel her frustration because she owns property next to it, you know, um, and if it wasn't, I've lived by people that were messy, but this is beyond that, you know, it's way beyond that. So. Anyway, uh, is, is this exclusive a contract for trash collection? Is just a step, you know, if we can get people sorry, thank having you trash thank collection, you know, then these kind of situation shouldn't be able to develop. They would have an opportunity to, to be able to uh, get rid of their trash at that right. time. Right, I mean, we, we, before it got to be the kind of problem. How are you going to, I got a question, I don't want to throw in a roadblock, but how are you going to enforce that everyone does it? Do what? How are y'all going to enforce that everyone does the it? The trash pickup? That, um, that's to be discussed. To be determined. That was just a thought honest. when you said that. When you said that. Shouldn't you discuss that clause with them since they're here? Well, that's, that's the, the way the other cities do it, and I don't know if y'all can. The way the other cities do it, they bill it on their water bill, and it's a, it's required. And if they don't, they if they have water. They, they no. don't have water if they don't pay. Yeah. We we probably probably say say water water yeah. I, so, I know. This, I, that, that's what I mean. How would y'all discussion with the with the district first because and with the uh, city attorney. I don't the way this read, it was on their it, it was their responsibility. The way this statute—that's the way it's written. We can't enforce that they. I, mean, this, this, I don't know. That's what I was asking. I, I don't know. This document says if people don't pay for their trash collection, you notify the city 
And then our full yes. report from the And that, that's a doable process. Uh, because you've got two entities here. Yes. We're, we're not in charge. But of we have to get the cooperation of the district to provide us with I, you know, you know, a current list of water meters. And then there's going to be the issue of the part time people that have their water meter turned off when they're not here. And I don't think so. I don't want to get involved with water. What about people with a well, though? That's. Do they have no wells? No wells. No there's no wells. There's one. Maybe one. Damn soon. But anyway, I don't want to get into that. I, I listened to too many arguments and gripes about how high the water bill is, and I don't want to add anything else to the water bill. No, it, I don't think we can put it on the water bill because uh, the city doesn't. And we said he doesn't have the water department here. That but y'all will have, like I said, she says that someone didn't pay. Y'all will have somebody to. Right. To, well, yeah, we, we will have a code enforcement officer. Okay, okay. that's why I didn't know how to be enforced. Yeah. 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 yeah, as soon as we get this ordinance passed, this ordinance um, authorizes well, me to hire a code enforcement okay. officer. Okay, that was my thought because, you know, if, if you say you, we got exclusive and we send them all a bill and they don't pay it, well, what are we going to do? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I didn't, I didn't know. Yeah. If you have someone that that, that I could work with, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> like right now we send variable reinforced in Eureka around the 20th of each month, what's called an overflow sheet, so that they can put it on the bills. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm not saying we didn't put it on your bills by no means. We would still bill them, but we would send you an Excel sheet of the ones that we show have not paid in more than two months okay. because our standard is yes you know everybody freezes their bill you've got till the 20th of the next before i suspend it and then the 30th 31st 20th or whatever if it's still not paid then i close it at that time is when we could you know put those customers and then I would just send you the spreadsheet. Most people don't go to that because it's reactivation. Or, yeah. Know, yeah. Most people don't go so at that time, it's about two months. Yeah. My understanding is that you will actually send out the bill. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I have debit. I'm, I'm on the auto drafts in the past couple months, no, month before, I sent everybody a bill or a state. And you're keeping two? I didn't either. Okay, yeah, there was like 12 or 3,000. Uh, anyway. But anyway, yes, we I, can yeah. mail out statements. I, 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 I think this is a good solution to the building problem. One more question. Uh, the uh, mayor of Kenny from Barryville spoke to Rotary a few weeks ago and talked about their deal of having sell tags and get you know, two bags or whatever mm -hmm. for part of your for the service and then you buy additional. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you handle that now? Oh, well, it, mostly for elderly that really don't put out extra bags. Maybe, no, you're talking about extra bags. Extra bags. Oh, the extra bags. I'm sorry. Yes, the city of Barrable and the city of Green Forest. Um, you go to their water department and purchase a bag tag and they sell it to you and then uh, we get a portion of that. So it's not a bag, it's a bag tag. It's a bag tag. Yes. But well, see, but see they, like I said, everyone's got different contracts. Different. They set up their contract, the city of Barable set up theirs, one bag per household. Mm -hmm. okay. So they sell a lot of tags. I mean, yeah. it depends on what you want. If you want to go with the service we got, which is the easiest thing in the world to do, but and just require that we pick up their trash. I mean, it, it all so the, now it's whatever I get in that 90 gallon yeah. barrel. Yes, yeah. yes. Because that's the because that's the service you pick. Yes. And, and that and but I think I, there have been times that I thought that if, it, if I had excess bags that I put on top, mm -hmm. I've been charged for that. Yes, most generally, sometimes drivers. You know, especially if you didn't have it out the week before. Our drivers try to be, if we get the same driver on the route okay. and he knows so you may have been full and then no, you got some sticking I, I out of you. So I'm just making sure right. that's how that works. Yeah. Barrel has a really I like generation. Green Forest has yeah. two bank service. My wife says she's so, good. And if I, I mean, right. the best thing to do is <laughs> not y'all not require a certain kind of service, just require a service. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
All the, I mean, every contract's different in every city. Well, I, every family you know, is different. I think there's exclusive services. The only thing that's going to work, and, 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 and there's going to be problems. But oh yeah, people, you are going to have a full room the next time. I mean, it. No, uh, <laughs> I don't. You know, the only thing that you know that we anticipate have, you know, having these folks have some kind of a hearing or, or, or like form, a public, or, public forum or something to let them present you know when we get to that point when we on this board you require it, come back and we can we can show up at a council or whatever y'all want i mean we're uh yeah because there's going to be push I, well you say that but you know this was a publicly announced yeah, I, I don't know meeting. Everybody wrong. knew that trash well, collection was going to be I, on I, the I hope, I hope I'm wrong. But I, all and, I know uh, is I, I went through it 15 years ago and I was on the DOC and there was a lot of pushback. Uh, well, well, you know, I'm, we did not, Let's go ahead, sorry. I'm not going to say there won't be any grumbling okay. if, if we decide to do it. Right. But, um, but well, I'd be surprised I, I, I'm not afraid of the grumbling because I think it needs to we we it did this, we did this in Green Forest twenty years ago or something, and and we thought it was I don't know how long ago it was but it was going to be everybody thought it was going to be a nightmare Every, all you know around town everybody's grappling it was so smooth we come in there we started picking it up it worked most of the people are the grumbling then aren't here anymore so. <laughs> well, they don't show up here April where do you get your address list from so that you know who's not or who is on your list the best way is from water meters. Because I can import those into my system. Water yeah. meters or turned on water? Water meters. Doesn't water matter meters. if it's turned on or not. But because a lot of people have houses that are on, you know, True. just being sold. True, on something. vacation. Yeah. I think yeah. said, that's where we go to vacation this minimum houses. thing. Yeah, and that's the best way for my system to import it, is yeah, based on the water meter number. Okay. So that's why it doesn't matter if it's turned on or not. So have. what about my ear? Am I paying? No, for my irrigation. No, no, no. no because gotta, there is gotta a irrigate difference. those rocks. <laughs> the, uh, however, uh, like Eureka Springs is where I first learned several we do that a long time ago that a lot of people have a water line and then they have an irrigation line. Yeah. But it's the numbering that she explained to me that determine whether it's a regular water line or an irrigation line. Well, so you could, they you know. just tell. Uh, because you don't want to do it on every vacant, yep. I mean, that'd be the best way because you don't want to do every vacant property or nothing, you know, you want to do it with the residents or. Yeah, the, the, um, that's why I say I have to talk to the district. I haven't talked to them yet about being involved in this, but they will have to provide us with a list of water meter customers. And they're going, there's going to have to be a process by which that gets maintained because you know, there's a lot of rental property in Holiday Island, so the uh, you know the water meter will be in the renter's name. And if you don't, and um, so if they move and somebody else moves in, well, we need to be able to tell you. That's what I was gonna say. You don't just want it exclusive that we're the only ones here. That ain't gonna make us pick up their trash. Mm -hmm. I mean, unless you make it where everyone's required to do it, you know, um, somehow. But you'll have to know. Who to bill, you know? Yes. If, Good. if yeah. somebody new moves in, well, you got new home, new homes, and everything. Yeah. So yeah. you're prepared to make changes on the the, the person's name. Oh yeah, the address. Yeah, like the cities now, they will email us once a month. You know, the the person's name, the address, uh, their account number with the water company, yeah, and good. then moved out, moved in, that type of thing. That's that's a format that we can fit and tailor to what you can do. That, that every one single one's thing. different. I mean, we're big enough to where I can work with what you need, but we're not so big that I say, well, this is what I have. Does that are make you, sense? Are you also under the same security situation that we have with our water? system that uh, we cannot release the names no of, why we cannot release the names so of, you are uh, under that same people. security privacy aspect 
Yeah, any kind of company, okay. yes. Right. Um, whether we that should, are or not. That should relieve us of that concern that the district yeah. would have releasing that data. We don't release information about employees. I mean, if, if somebody calls, we do see this a lot, somebody calls, wants to give their trash guy a Christmas card. Okay. We'll give them the name. That's it. I don't like putting on the route sheet uh, vacation. You know, won't be back till. No, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, just. Granted, it is our employees, but <laughs> yeah, don't, yeah. don't do that. My, well, my house won't. There won't be anybody at my house yeah. next week. So <laughs> we do, if, if, we you, do, if you want to come, we do take your really privacy. <laughs> That's Very why my serious. my wife won't post anything on Facebook when we're on vacation because that are, that advertises to the world that there's nobody in your house. In this day and time, it does. Yes. <laughs> but I also have to look at accounting, you know, and auditing purposes. I have to answer for all of this, so well, I'd rather I, play on the, the yeah, same thing. Side. There's a lot of detail to work out as far as the contract and. You know what kind of service we need and, and how we're going to manage the building and all of that kind of stuff so um, you know when we get to that point we're going to have to have another meeting to sit down and okay. talk about you know what the contract would look right. like but it's got to happen we'll help you we'll help you, yeah we'll help you through it i mean a lot of it is up to y'all though i mean and yeah. we can we can tell you what we want to do but i mean it's really it's up to y'all who are the other, I mean, just, I'm sure you know, because we're supposed to be licensed with you. Um, who are the other carriers here? Well, in Holiday Island, Ace, area. Osage might have some. Osage is Republic. Uh, X Dumpsters. X Dumpsters, and he does mostly cleanups. Um, he's not a weekly trash. Uh, I have a total of nine small haulers licensed per year. But some of them don't come here. But some of them in South Carroll County, yeah. But you've got, you know, the Moark, the Osage, X Dumpsters, and the Ace, Ace and, and then Republic. Us. Do y'all do uh, like a construction dumpster? Yes. Yes. Okay. We do temporary small ones weekly and then we do twenties and thirty roll off ones, like what you see at construction sites. So that would be a consideration that if we do the contract to have that covered well, I guess. That, it usually it's in is. Here somewhere. Yeah, it usually that's is. That's usually part of the uh, solid waste. Yeah, that, 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 that's how you keep from awesome. having multiple trucks. And um, uh, I had one more question, but it's gone now. I have a 90 gallon container on my curb each week. Is there a smaller container? 65. 65. Well, you can go with the 65 gallon cart that we supply, or you can get your own cans and do the two bag service, two cans okay. service. Because uh, I was wondering, I and my wife, we recycle, so our garbage is typically, typically yeah. one 13 gallon bag exactly. a week. Yeah. You don't need a 55 sure. gallon container. You provide you your own trash can, we pick yeah. it up. Yeah. You could. In, in that suggestion, what I recommend when I talk to somebody, like if it calls me, do a backpack. It's like a dollar sixty for each, you know, that you put on your back. But he'd still be paying his money. And you say you get twenty. Well, if that lasts you twenty weeks, okay. If that lasts you two years, is that for okay? a thirty gallon bag? That's for each, yeah, one bag That's for each. each bag. For well, each, each bag. bag, but it would. It's best if you could put it in a thirty gallon. That way, you get two weeks in one tag. Like well, a fifty-five gallon garbage bag. Well, honestly, <laughs> I do. I do. Honestly, you get the big ones. We're not supposed to pick those up. Okay, all right. So you limit it to a thirty gallon bag. Uh, yeah, 30, 40, 30, 35, 35, I think is what the. Do a lot of people put yard waste in these? We see that frequently in the fall. Yes, but it's it's so long. Yeah, so we yard waste is our, yard waste cannot go to an Arkansas landfill. Right? They can reject our loads. Now you can burn yard waste. Yes. That's the only thing in Arkansas you can burn. Uh, yard and maybe this burn. comes up when we discuss this ordinance in more detail, but that's one of my main questions is about what do we do about yard waste? 
You know what? You so Arkansas says we can't dump yard waste, but Arkansas doesn't allow yard waste dumps. They are yes. They don't have a place where we can take tree limbs and leaves. We don't. We're solid waste. We don't do yard waste at all. Does anybody in Carroll County? Rick Springs takes it on Wednesday. But I don't know what they do for a city. But yeah. No. No, well, it's behind it. It's the same driveway, but it's behind it, and they munch it up. Is what they do. Yeah. I think municipal. I'm worried about having to get fired. I am too. I've had gone down. there for years, and I called Sir, Eureka, and it was fine. Holes like that were fine. Over the hill. Over the hill. Why is it bad? No. Forest fire in there one time because it's like. I have a trailer, like limbs or leaves and stuff I put in. Put in a trash can and dump, but there's a lot of people bringing in plastic bags and dump the plastic bags. They have a compost facility, is what they got there. Yes. You have to take the plastic bags with you, but yeah, you can haul it there. They compost it then. Okay. And tree limbs and stuff, they chip and compost. But then you can also get on their list when they go to disperse the compost. But any of those questions or anything like that, you can talk to Beth yeah, city. at Public Works. Yeah, we could probably, in time, we could probably work something out with the district to use the depot up there, you know, that the big vacant lot. That's where they take Well, that's what stuff. I always thought, and I, you know, I've uh, always the, been the interested problem, in that. The problem we're going to have is that that's, uh, Kenny already has a problem with people beating the gate down and dumping refrigerators and stuff back in there. So, so you, you, in some way you know, again, you know, you, you start out doing something, you know, that 99% of the people are going to appreciate and not abuse, and then you'll have one or two. I mean, you got so many that. people out here, who are like me, for instance, and some of you, that uh, you don't have a truck, you know, if you, you don't you, want to burn because you don't really have any suitable place to burn it, or you're, you, you're frightened of it, like me. Or we do anything. The thing that's really worrisome. <laughs> you wouldn't if, want me to set a fire. Is if you go across from my house or behind his house, I'm not so sure we're not creating a hazard oh. in the woods. Oh, absolutely. And there's piles of leaves that's, yeah. and trash that high. Yeah. And it's in part because we have few options of we don't get have rid of any it. Options. I mean, so you, you, so you call Kenny and he'll chip up your small stuff. To deal with. Somebody yeah. was doing that a week or so ago. There was yeah, I've seen them on the all the time. Pulling all the a, big, a big tarp, uh, dragging a big tarp across Holiday Island Drive full of leaves heading towards the vacant lot to dump mm -hmm. all their oh, oh, yeah. leaves. Hey, I don't yeah. know how many leaves it's is it? Sunday, we, what's that? What's the neighbor? Carry his bags full of leaves and dump them down in the court. Well, I've seen them off of five, especially a lot. It's because we have no option. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have no option. Well, here's what we do we can have someone haul it to Eureka Springs to the uh, yard waste site. Well, that's, that's the option we have. It's, that's yeah. the it's like, option, maybe. It's like the person to haul it. Right, you get right, let's, uh, let's get off of yard waste here because they don't do yard waste. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, might want to consider getting into it. Sounds like you there's a big yard waste. Uh, 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 we'll, we'll, we'll look into it. Don't call me, I'll call you. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, appreciate it. Any other questions? Is uh, Carroll County Solid Waste a profitable operation? Are you going to be here in 20 years? Uh, yes. We've been here since '93. We're doing. We're doing. I don't know you'll be here in 20 years. How do Nobody you know you'll be here. Let me ask the question, please. We have established foundation. Okay. And outside of a major disaster, with our board, <laughs> uh, chairman, the mayors, the county judge, I don't see us going anywhere. Trash is going nowhere. Uh, uh, 
Uh, well, we, we have very we have secure they, jobs. We have they everybody produces trash. I understand we, that, but my concern is what legislators above us in the state and the federal levels might do to someone like Carroll County Solid Waste. We because have, you're small. Okay. We're, we're to the big guy. Yes. But we, we, we are a district. Go ahead. We do, because we are a district there, and they are part of this regional, or not regional, the districts the directors of all the districts of Arkansas, and they're even more, they even work yearly on legislation and having a spokesperson be involved in that state legislation. Okay. We have, uh, what are they That's called? That's what I started to say. The, the, what's our guys called that go to the senators and the legislation? The WSO. Lobbyists. 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 We actually, yes. we, we actually. Uh, working for us. I'm, I, I believe that the district was formed by order of the county judge, right? No, the no, district was No. I thought the county judge no, had uh, to initiate that. Just Phil like the Jackson has district. been looking for us to become a district for a long time. Phil and Mayor. We were, we were founded as an authority. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. The district only became the, uh, didn't, I mean, I really, you know, Sam Barr, I don't know. Uh, well, it, it was a, it was a, the whole board approved yeah, the whole board it, approved. but Mayor Kim and Phil worked closely because Phil knew a lot of the Senate and you know knew a lot of the political about it. Yeah. Uh, and it finally passed 2019, but we had to get the approval of uh, AGQ. We had to go down to Little Rock, and it was the land, land and resource. But the point we'd go in front of them the and they approve this. The district will never go away. No, no, that's we are the right. no. district now it, they, in Arkansas. And even if Carroll County Solid Waste goes away, the district will never go away. No. Are, you, are you considered a governmental yes. body under yes. the control of the state? Yes, yes, non profit, non profit governmental. We were actually created by Act 7 or 8. And we've got a good standing company. Uh, nobody owns the company. A good standing company with a good standing uh, board members uh, that oversee the company. Uh, I just and we're not here so to don't see Carroll County. Nobody's going to come in and buy Carroll County. Yes, yeah. yes, it's a state. We're under the we're it's under the division of state. environmental quality. Yeah. Yes. I think the original authority, though, that the Solid Waste Authority, I bet, was actually found or established by order of the county judge. Yes, the authority, authority was. Well, we were created the, 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 by the, the move up to being a district yeah. was done by the board. But, well, the, uh, yeah, the authority or whatever it was then here. But I think Lynn's question, you know, are we going to are we going to quit or, or move out or dissolve? Carroll County Solid Waste. No. Um, okay. I'm sorry. It was Act 699 of 1979 and Act 919 of 1979. Became a status as a public body and body corporate and political pursuant to Act 699 of 1979. And so we, 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 take we were created. We take being a district very seriously. Um, Carroll County. Is really and, and we do got some customers in Missouri, you know, along 96 and, and along uh, County Road to the East, and along the other. But and we're just as serious about taking care of those customers. But we we are very concerned about taking care of the needs of Carroll County what? people in town. And uh, not to make a profit, we're a non-profit. We're here to provide some jobs, pay our employees, and buy equipment. And buy equipment. <laughs> Honestly. And, and do the best service. What kind of dividend do you pay? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you. Anything else? Thank you very much. Yeah, thank, thank you for thank coming over. Yes, thank you. Thank okay, you. Well, you're, you're welcome. Call us back uh, anytime. Uh, Dan, call me anytime you have any questions. Yep. Well, I hope we don't have to have a forum because I think we'd be too much. Yeah. Uh, we've been to Eureka forums. We've been to. Y'all make the rules. Forums. We'll fulfill the contract. And there we go. <laughs> oh, I, I, I just remembered you hung around too long. 
I just remembered what my other contract or my other question was. Uh, do uh, do any other of the other cities, does Green Forest, Berryville, or uh, or Eureka Springs, do any of those have multiple carriers, or are they no. all exclusively? They are all exclusive with us. That's what yes. I'm exclusive okay. contracts. Okay. Matter of fact, we run a lot of them out of those towns a lot of times. You know, pop ones that don't know. Them, uh, mm -hmm. You know. Uh, waste management knows, but they may be somebody sick, somebody else in the office that day, somebody a call from Burville and order a container, uh, a 30-yard container, and they set one, mm -hmm. and then we'll have to have them remove it. But we are we are the only exclusive policy, okay. and that's the way the contract is really good. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you, guys. Uh, the first Saturday, are you going to call me on that damn first Saturday of May? Or is that pretty much a go you feel? Or I, you I don't know that we have a, they didn't a, have a dog in the fight. They, they, have, they have George because they're just kind of custom control. Oh, okay. Yeah, he said okay. that. So I would I, set it up through the district. I, I think that the, yeah. the district usually made some sort of an announcement about it. Yes. But, uh, we, ma we mailed out letters. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So okay. you don't need any approval from us or anything. If you put your stuff out the day before, half of it would be gone. Uh, yes. <laughs> Which helps us. Yeah. I don't know how you guys feel about it. <laughs> but not Never. So, maybe I can get rid of that busted up uh, yeah. computer cabinet <laughs> no, that's in the office. It's got to be functional. I should have made that a condition of you guys coming yeah. over. <laughs> All that up. Dan, would you like for us to stick around? Or? No, you don't have to stick around. We, I think we picked you ready enough. Thank you. We'll Thank let you go back to work. Thank you. Thank you for the usual. One thing about your business, it's always picking up. Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, Thank you. We're going to take a five minute break before we check. Okay. I already did. We'll. Uh, Recess for five minutes. Uh, water's gone. I'm going to go into the DTs. I'm going to have to have my wife. So we should go to Dr. Carl. All right, we're back out of recess. We're going to uh, work the, the way we'll, you know, um, approach the rest of the morning here. And I do plan on being done in an hour. Um, or we're going to cut it off in an hour. I'm going to go through all of these uh, sections of the code and just ask if anybody has any questions or comments. I'm not going to uh, read the entire thing. We're going to just go through sanitation 504. No, well, we'll start out there, but then we're going to go into 508. Oh, okay. Uh, I got a lot of questions. Let's make sure we get through 504. Yeah, 508 is okay. going to be a real issue. Okay, 50401. Any questions on that paragraph? Mr. Mayor. Yes. When uh, we have uh, title regulations, usually Title 5.01 would be a title paragraph. There's a, usually a section in titles what the whole thing is about. So my question is, are there missing sections 501 through 503 that we need to add, add that in here? Uh, it it um, starts under chapters. Okay. On this page, the chapters start with uh, 504 sanitation. Okay. So. Um, I, again, I'm on, honorably adopting this from another city, okay. so uh, they obviously just reserve 501 to 503. Okay. Right. So 501, 50401 created. Any questions there? Nope. No. O2? Uh, well, yep. Just a terminology, why are we using garbage? Garbage doesn't mean. Yeah, I mean, why would that? Isn't it in trash? Be a better name for that. Trash is defined differently. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Well, garbage is not shrubbery and, <laughs> and furniture and machinery. Anyway, yeah. 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 garbage to me is food stuff. Anyway, trash is defined as any item worth little or nothing, such as things that are no longer useful or wanted. That have been thrown away, also known as chaff, deadwood, debris, direct, dross, dust, junk, litter, offal, off scoring, raffle, refuse, riprap, rubbish, scrap, spilt, or waste. That's different than 
It doesn't make a lot of difference. That no, that's what I think we need to have. Oh, okay. Definition for trash and then put trash in a couple other places. Yeah. Um, anyway. So you're saying add a definition of add the definition of trash. Of trash. Yeah, and then there'll be there'll be there'll be places where we insert the word trash. Because it says garbage, but we probably want to say and trash and that kind of thing. Garbage yeah. is like virtually everything if it says that. Garbage is defined as uh, stuff that comes from waste of of uh, like food or organic, or, organic waste. Yes, organic waste. Well, yeah, and that's what I'm saying. That this doesn't do well, that. It right. Cans and jars, though. It's it says garbage right. is animal or vegetable waste resulting from the handling, preparation, cooking, and consumption of food. This 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 to me is trash. Right. So that's why we need to add trash as a definition and then put trash in the appropriate spots. Right. I got it. Okay. 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 Well, does that address the issue that I see? Does this say that garbage includes rat sleep, shrubbery, and small trees? Which they cannot take. Um, that doesn't mean you're excluded from the definition. Okay. You know, just because it's just because it's a form of garbage doesn't necessarily mean that the contract that we have with Carroll County would include picking that up. Okay. If it didn't say. Unless the contract says they'll pick up garbage. And that means Did you this. pick this up from oh, one of our oh. local Carroll County cities or a different city? I think I started with Conway's. Okay. Because maybe they do pick up yard waste in Conway. Well, he, I don't know. A lot, a lot of larger cities do. Where I came from, did. It had a few separate container, but it was a big thing. Yeah. Well, you want to. You want to scratch the part about grass leaves, shrubbery, and small trees? Yeah, yeah I think Wes's point is that it needs to be consistent with the contract that we're anticipating. Well, none of this building doesn't work. work. The only pens that work here are the ones that Lynn buys. Cheap ones. <laughs> Cheap ones work all here. All these freebies. Maybe the key is if you buy the pen, it'll work. If it's a freebie, it won't. These are all free. That says Holiday Inn. This one says Quality Inn. Right. Anything else that needs to be scratched you know, I, out of? I don't take the pillows. Are they the Bible? No. 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 Do what? Yeah. Well, we may want to revisit this paragraph once we get the contract. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. All right. Business, uh, commercial, and all the fees. That will have to be negotiated. Yeah. Payment of fees. Any questions? No. Disposition of funds. It just yeah. says the money goes into the general <coughs> fund. Yeah. Uh, containers. No. That just basically says it'll be negotiated. Yeah. Burning or dumping. It shall be unlawful to burn or dump. I had a question there. Do we need to qualify what can be burned? Somewhere. Well, it and, says, and is that under the burn? Says any trash or garbage. It's unlawful to burn, period. Well, I'm, yeah, my question was more the opposite of, of where are we going to put what can be burned? Is that under another? Burning by the way, is that fair? Maybe. Is that, well, that's a, oh, we got a whole section. Does that, that thing, <clears throat> does that throw any garbage or trash? Do we need that order of trash? Well, I it guess says, that came to mind because the first sentence of 508 says, No person shall burn trash, garbage, or other <coughs> types of waste material in any manner whatsoever. Yes. So, and that, that matches 50409. Yeah. Five five zero four zero nine basically uh, reaffirms state law. State law says you can't burn garbage. Period. Okay. 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 So now, question: If we go back to where, if we eliminate grass, trees, shrubbery, and small trees from five zero four zero two, does that mean yeah. that you can burn? No, we're going to deal with that. Yeah, it just 
it, it'll be in a different section. Okay. If we allow burning of yard waste, it'll be in a different section. And since we refer to trash and garbage, it confirms that we need to add a definition of trash. The trash and garbage are things that can be picked up by the hauler. Mm -hmm. yes. okay. All right, fines. Um, I thought the spines were awfully small. <laughs> I think they're too small. Well, except they're kind of daily. They come every occurrence of the day. Yeah, that's that's where they get you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'll, I'd have to go back and reread uh, 1610 305. The state law may limit what you can, how much of a fine you can impose. It says well, actually, this one is not available. By the way, you know, once we get this hammered off to the point that we like it, we're going to have to run it by Justin anyway because of the fact that there are fines and penalties involved. All right, uh, section 12, inspectors. Did we pass 50402 definition already? Yeah. Uh, the only reason I ask because it doesn't have the word trash in that paragraph at all. You, you already brought that up. I made a note to add a definition of trash. Okay. All right. Um, now we're up to penal or to inspectors. This authorizes the uh, code enforcement officer. Thirteen penalty. <coughs> we don't have any problem until we get all the way down here. In our discussion on uh, yeah. zoning, uh, when we talked about penalties, we added some decks to uh, say the city can recover its prosecution costs. Is this the place where we would put that? No. It only talks about a fine. <laughs> Yeah, I can I can raise that question. I I don't know how we would go. You know that that's if it goes to the district. That that basically I think I think from a legal perspective they would say that that's what the fine does. That you know the city is not supposed to make money off of fines. We don't make money recovering costs. Cost of doing it. Now, if it costs us five thousand dollars to prosecute the case, shouldn't we be able to recover that if we win? Yeah. So my point or my question is, do we have to have it in here to say we want to recover those costs? My concern is if it doesn't say that we want to recover, the judge can say you don't get your costs. I'll ask Justin the question: Can we try to recover the cost of prosecution? I think Is this also the same place that we would uh, put a paragraph to talk about if we have to clean it up? Um, that is further down. Okay. Enforcement. Let's see. This just basically says that that um, the county can also enforce county and state regulations. Authority to contract for service, that just means that if, if the city's got something to clean up that Carroll County couldn't or wouldn't do, then we're authorized to hire somebody else to do it. Both the items, this gets to the, uh, to the pickup thing, and this will be basically negotiated as part of the contract, too.
So that may change after we get the yeah. contracts and yeah. hammer yeah. it out. Both the item thing and all that. Don't really depend on the contract. Mm -hmm. 50419 limits on yard waste. There, I, I reserve that. Right now, it's nothing. Five hundred four twenty white goods, electronic waste, and household that that'll be part of the negotiation. Charges at the landfill. I don't think we would even get into that, but oh, if we so. ever do in the future, um, there'd be a section there for it. That's fifteen. Yeah, uh, twenty-two. I'm on twenty-two. Twenty-two. Okay. Well, where was the yard waste? I, section was that? Sure. I, it's just reserved because yard waste is not, they don't, they don't pick up yard waste. So, um, but it's there in case someday in the future we want to provide for that. All right. Um, Waste being transported to the landfill. <coughs> this basically says that the hauler has to make sure they're not uh, just you know, spreading our trash all, all over the county. And then I made a note for myself, uh, 50424 about recycling that I think we need to add a paragraph in here about, um, I don't think we can make recycling mandatory necessarily, but we can put something in here about oh, the service they, being they will provide, provide recycling service. Yeah. yeah. It's not, man, it, it's not an issue other than the fact that I think we should note in here um, something yeah. about recycling. We did say that Holly Holland does a pretty good job of doing it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, the contract has will have to include the you know trash and or provide for recycling, and yeah. they do. Also, I don't. I'm not sure that some of the other ones do. I've seen. I mean, the, the, this paragraph will probably say something to the effect that Holiday Island, the city of Holiday Island, encourages recycling. Or something that similar, but well, the contract simple. has to provide recycling. But, um, but it would it would support doing things like having the you know the cardboard dumpsters across the street and stuff like that. Um, Which, by know. the way, they provide as a free service to Holiday Island. Um, Carroll County does. So where do we go from here? We, we can't really do much with this until we. And out what the contract is going to look like. Dana? Um, uh, I'll probably sit down and, and, you know, I gave a copy of this to George, and he'll probably, and, you know, he and I can talk about it. Um, I'm kind of thinking because we want to get this going fast. Right. And I don't think, you know, I in think some that, places this is trying to mirror what the contract is and the contract is should, I mean this should just talk about the general what so I I, 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 find that I think it's more specific than it's going to be a, um, I think a lot of us are more kind of interested in the details but it shouldn't be in the ordinance well other than the fact that there's going to have to be future contracts negotiated and maybe that contract won't be with Carroll County Solid Waste, so you don't want your, you know, you don't want their contract being the regulation. Right, and I saw that was the point I was trying to make. Yes, uh, but what I'm, what I was going to suggest is that we have that that um, we get the ordinance as close as we can to being what we want, uh, subject to modification because this will have to do. We'll have to do three readings on this as well. Right. So if if we have to make some modifications to it, you know, as long as we get it done before the third reading, you know, we 
Which you find, and we have the first reading next month, week. Yeah, that's right. what I'm planning on. Okay. So right. Hold on for I, I agree. We need to well, we talk about that with emergency. Five, 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 five. No, we can't do. We can't do that. Just the sanitation section. I think we. we yeah, don't I would intend to do this whole thing. Okay. Well, next week we're, we're going to be working with sanitation or as much of it as we think we can do. I agree. All right, so if there's nothing more on uh, Section 504, then we can move on to 508, Maintenance of Real Property. Oh, boy. Okay. 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 Again, I'm not going to read this. Does anybody uh, have? No, no. I had a little problems with it. You said no problem. Except as provided in section 50810. Well, I, I, are we got a, I got a ton of questions. I think we, we, got, we both got a ton of questions. In 508.07, apparently I have the same question, Dan, under bullet number one. Already, the, the copy you guys have, the, my last copy that I sent out, should have had in red all of your suggestions. Oh, okay, right. And, uh, and I put in there under 508071A1 court costs and costs of prosecution. Okay. Anybody else have uh, yeah. questions, comments on oh, that, that? This thing with alcohol burn barrels, right? No. No. That's not alcohol. Well, I, I don't know what. I don't know what. It's the, the one what? in the fire for the way it's read it read it reads it. Read. Only incinerators conforming to the Arkansas Air Pollution Control Code. I have no idea what that is. Then you can't have one if you don't know. If you want to burn, you need an incinerator to meet that code. And there's somewhere in there it says you have to have a, a permit from the uh, city by the fire chief. Right. right. That's yeah. down below. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you you got to get approval from the fire chief to light it, but you have to have the right container to light. Yeah. Um, just wondering what you know, what what does that look like? It's the size of a uh, typically it's the size of a half of a container, and it's got a specific chimney on it, and it's got a uh, collector for debris, so the smoke comes out of it clean. What's a half a container? Uh, it's not a full truckload, but a half truckload size box, oh, okay. uh, thirty yards, whatever they call that size oh, container. Okay. Okay. It's a big chunk of metal. Mm -hmm. Okay. My my problem with this is that B says burning will be allowed by individuals and businesses with some restrictions, but A says no person shall burn trash, garbage, or other types of waste except, in any manner whatsoever. Except they're as, totally contradictory. I see what you're saying. Except as provided under five hundred eight ten. Yeah. So is. Then B should be under 50810. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, you're right. <laughs> it's confusing. I, I had a little problem with that, you know. Yeah, I think she's right. It needs to be moved to the, as an exception. So you just want to make the one statement. Yeah. And then the exceptions all go in the exceptions. That makes kind of sense. Uh, when we get so how about if I say um, within the uh, that, that no person shall burn trash garbage or other types of waste material in any manner whatsoever within the city limits except as provided in this code. Well, it doesn't have to be 508. Well, that's where all the exceptions, that's where all the exceptions that's where all are. The exceptions are. Wouldn't that make it flow a little easier? Yeah. Just put all the exceptions in one section. I think so. B makes no sense whatsoever. Well, it makes sense. Well, it, it makes doesn't sense. make it sense just, right there. I think it just needs to be. You can make it one of the bullet points under yeah. 510. I mean, yeah, 508. I think that's, that's, I agree. Maybe just make it 
Letter K. Yeah. yeah. All right, got that? Okay. All right. You ready to move on to 07? Yeah. What? Penalties. 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 Added uh, under uh, item was uh, court costs or co court costs and cost of prosecution with a question mark. I don't have any problem with seven or eight. All right, move on to 08. Littering declared illegal. Yes, this one. Should there be a cost number or a cost of that portion of the number? Issue of citation or littering? Unless they throw it out the car window, then they can do that. Uh -huh. <laughs> In 508.08, the concern I have is that. Um, I, I, my note is, it's interesting, if, you know, if a company's property owner, the employee, being a tenant, is involved in an accident like littering for a property owner while performing work renting, the company is sued along with the employee. So is somehow just the property owner only going to be the ones declared illegal and, and fined, or is the property owner somehow going to be involved in this for the renters? Situation. So we hold the owner of the property responsible for what the renter is doing. Is the question? He says you can. That's why. That's my question. Why? I don't know how you're going to enforce it. Well, if I own a piece of property and the tree on my property falls on the neighbor's house, the property owner is responsible for it, not the renter. That's not listening. I know. I'm just asking the question. Should the property owner be tied to the littering problem? Well, you know, here's a consideration. Well, it's real hard to get rid of the renter if they're not doing stuff the right way. I mean, you can't hardly kick a renter out. Okay. Uh, so what do you do? I mean, you go after the property owner. You go, no, the property owner has so little uh, ability to kick out a renter. Seriously, in Arkansas. Right. It takes Am a I while. right? It, it yeah. takes a while. It takes forever. Yeah. And, and so you can't, you, I don't think you can hold them. Properly. And it's not just Arkansas. I don't see how you You have to go after the river. Well, it, it, and, you know, in the theory of suits, you go after the deepest pockets to get your things accomplished. And the pocket owner is the guy who owns the property. But and if, if you can't go after him, you put a lien on his property. But if his hands are tied, how are, why are you holding him responsible? He can't get rid of his. He can't force his renter out of the property. Uh, technically, I don't think it's litter if it's on, you know, if I'm renting a house and I throw trash in the front yard, as long as it stays in the front yard, it's not litter. It's only litter when it blows into the neighbor's yard. Well, if it, C says so, if, if it remains on the property, it's not litter. Right. So. I don't know. I'm not sure how you would pull the property owner. But it like says uh, it's, it's if the litter remains on the property and the act does not create a public health or safety hazard, a public nuisance, or a fire hazard, which it could. Okay. Hey, no, I think I'm not going to be doing that for you. No. Well, so I, I Lynn, your your I issue is you don't like. You don't like statement D that the property right. where we say the property owner shall not be held responsible. Right. I just know people who have rented out their property to what appeared to be decent citizens and they trashed it. Totally trashed well, it. And they the, couldn't get we it. just talked yeah. about one earlier. So in that property uh, owner there's a difference between dumping and littering, I think. Yeah. Right. Well, no, that, that, that situation on Dollar would probably start in the litter. I, you know, you can't I, I'm guessing out. that I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that there's a whole can of worms relative to littering. Owners' responsibilities for the actions of their tenants. 
you know, because if so, if 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 if, uh, if we can hold the property owner responsible for the uh, person littering, you know, what if the person robs a bank? Is that you know, can we hold the property owner responsible for for them robbing a bank, or you know, what are the limits on well, the personal well, responsibility? What I tied it to was uh, a company and an employee have an auto accident. The companies are sued as long as, as well as the employee driving the car. This always happens. Yeah. Even though the guy was just going to go get lunch for the boss, he can get, the company can be sued for that accident. Mm -hmm. So why isn't the property owner also responsible for its renter, for its actions in this case? And I understand there's probably a can of worms, but that's why I asked the question, why well, is- We're talking criminal versus civil too. Civilly, they could be. Okay. But criminally, we want, I mean, that's what we're dealing with. That's a little different. <clears throat> Criminally, you're not generally found vicariously liable for the act of service. Civilly, you are. So I, 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 I understand your point. I don't, I don't split you. Yeah, you know, I, there is a, you know, a full, an argument on the other side of that. You know, if, if a tenant creates a um, Superfund site on their on that property, and the city has to go in and clean it up, um, we can put a lien against the property to cover the cost of doing that. So in this particular case, we would be holding the property owner financially responsible for the actions of their tenant. But if we have to take the tenant to the find him or her, the property owner wouldn't be accountable for that. Yeah. Well, maybe C covers me. The person is the owner or tenant in lawful possession of property and the litter remains upon the property. Maybe C involves the property owner. But then D is contradictory to that. Yes. Just don't find that one. The key word there is unlawful possession of the property. So you, you are thinking that one resides there. I don't know what we're going to do with this one. If you were to occupy it. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to find one that says they did not occupy it. They're making me think. <laughs> and, it, and it hurts. Paragraph, paragraph one of 08 says it's unlawful to dispose of litter on any public or private property. So even if it's the owner's property, that's private property. So it's illegal to leave litter. Well, what is litter? You know, crack? I don't know. Well, I mean, but you got the unless that lists the three exceptions. I don't see it in there anymore. I should have brought this up. When I read this before, it didn't seem like it's an issue. But then, Never ends until you And then when somebody else it. throws something in, I said it's not, it's not as simple as I thought it was. Well, it's, it's a personal life experience. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, litter is not defined in, our, in this text. I mean, we. Yeah. We just went through that other one where you know it talks about all kinds of illegal dumping and everything. And so this, I don't know, this is. I don't know why it looks like D is a common. I, I don't know why we got this. I, 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 I think that D is intended to to differentiate differentiate between if the owner is the one living on the property and creating the and, and creating the litter, or the tenant is. You can't sue both. Or you can't you can't go after both. If it's a tenant, then the tenant's responsible. If it's if the owner lives there, then the owner's responsible. That's the way I read it. That's the way I read it. Okay. Raised in there. All right. So. Okay, Jerry. I uh, <laughs> I have a question on uh, 
F down there instead of 150 yards from any hole. Well, let, let's, we yeah. got problems before we get to there. <laughs> 150 yards, I'm assuming. <laughs> yards, what's the difference? Well, I, I, I assume that you didn't Football mean, fields? That's, <laughs> that's like... <laughs> I did too. Yeah, everybody did. I looked at 150 wow. yards. That is my whole awesome. neighborhood. That's, that's like... It's awesome. bigger than any lot we have out here. To I, me, I, it's just like golf. I'm trying to hit the ball 100 yards, and I hit it 100 feet. <laughs> I'm, and I'm going to leave that one completely alone. I'm, uh, I'm not even sure 150 feet is a good one, but let's. All right, so let's start at the beginning here, 50810, uh, the initial paragraph. Uh, Lynn raised a question that the recently adopted building code uh, might conflict with that. Section so, that, yes, and trash burning. I quoted it there. Prior to lighting, in the building code, we said uh, prior to lighting any fire, it shall be the responsibility of the owner and or builder to notify the office of the holiday Island fire department, blah, blah, blah. So this is for burning stumps and stuff when, you, when you're when you clearing a lot. Right. And that's from an actual to burn brush and scrap lumber. Gives people no guidance whatsoever. It gives the fire department authority, not us. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not sure I understand the first paragraph. Are we we're making some exceptions for land developers, builders, but not a homeowner? That's the way it's reading. That's what that's, I mean. That's the issue. I think. What are we going to do with homeowners? You brought it up before. Right, boy. That you go That's, back to we're given limited options to a homeowner to deal with. Why are they not supposed to haul off their scrap lumber? That's what we talked about when we adopted the building code. That says there's no no fire once construction begins shall be permitted to propose to burn construction related items, except what the fire chief approves. And and brush is yard waste. That's uh, not construction. Uh, right, 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 right. Well, it says well, construction. burn brush and yeah. scrap lumber. In that original text, yeah. Anyway, what I'm, I'm trying, trying to get 150 yards out of I'm still saying if, if we're going to make any exceptions, let's talk about what the exceptions I are mean, later. Yeah. For land developers and builders, we should we're be. not going to have an exception for a homeowner of any kind. No, this should not be just for landowners. Well, there's no need. Why can't we at least put homeowner in there in addition to those other things? That, 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 that the exception should apply to everybody. Well, according to this, I know there are no exceptions whatsoever for a homeowner. Right. Only for a builder or a developer. Right. Can't we just add in homeowner? And then we can discuss later what exceptions we want to apply to who, but that completely excludes a homeowner from anything. I'm going to have some neighbors that are really upset about it. I guess we need to talk about the pros and cons of burning. Yeah. Well, I think philosophically we need to decide where we're going before yeah. we start to try to model this word by word. Everybody is going to be. Um, mad about not being able to burn their yard trash until their house burns down. Well, I understand. understand. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, I, I think it's something it, I, I wish we had an alternative because I don't like my neighbor piling up all of his leaves in the front yard and throwing a mat, well, put gas on it first and then throwing a match in it when the wind's blowing towards my house. I don't like driving through it when I drive no. down Holiday Island Drive that comes into my car. No, I, I realize that, that a lot of people like do it. All, but, but I don't like the alternative, which is people are throwing them over the hill and causing another potential hazard. So I, 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 I don't know what the solution is. We have a comment from the public? 
I oppose to that because uh, if anybody has health factors, it's very irritating, you know, irritating to me to go for the visual. If you can have a respiratory problem, you have any it's type exactly of two a, a down. medical situation that could, you know, pose problems with the burning asthma. Yeah. Okay, I, I will find with areas. this as long as I'm one of the exceptions. You're not. Um, I don't know what I don't. I I just think that I think the exception is it's not a good uh, it, it applies to homeowners also because well, I'm just saying I I, I come know. up with all kinds of trash in my tree. I got a whole lot of trees and I don't burn trees. We're going to burn ban burning. I guess that's really my point. Should we not do it for everybody or include homeowners with developers? And I mean, I don't know why we're giving them something that a homeowner doesn't have. I, I think you just need to add in. I think we need to develop a way to pick up yard waste. Well, and, and I don't think anybody would disagree with that. Or whatever. It, you know, Rain, but somehow to take care of it. If that uh, way. Our wages came from they finally the city and burning, period. But there was a big recycling plan, probably the size of three football fields, where you could haul stuff to and dump it. But here, even the hauling to and dumping, unless you would hire, you know, That's Israel or somebody to do, it. to do it, most people here wouldn't have the wherewithal to be able to haul their yard waste. And my wife would be upset if I put uh, that in the car. You know, I guess I don't, you know, we we give contractors the, uh, you know, the, we make the exception for the contractors to burn stumps and brush, basically. Uh, we don't give them the exception to burn construction materials. So, you know, we could, we could make the exception for everybody. Anybody can burn yard waste as long as they're under the same controls that we put on the builder, which says that they have to have, uh, that they can only burn certain times of the day. It's got to be put out before four o'clock at night. Um, they have to have water there while it's burning. And, uh, you know, one of the things that it's it says is when, uh, don't burn on, you can't burn on windy days. What the well, hell does that mean? We've got a burn ban that they put the signs up and everything. Well, I know, but it shouldn't it say that? No. I mean, well, it says, it says you have to notify, if you're going to burn, you have to what we allow for the building code is, if you're going to burn, you have to talk, you have to notify the fire department. And they won't give you one. If, if it's if it's not safe to burn, he won't so, let you. So these it. guys along Holiday Island Drive that are burning leaves in their little trenches in front of their house, right? They call the fire department. Or should have. They don't. Yeah. They don't today. But if they're going to allow it, if, they, if, they, if we're going to allow it in here, then they would. Have, then I think we would have to have some type, some sort of control over it. Otherwise, why even have a section in here about burning if we're not going to control it at all? If anybody can burn anything, anytime they want, anywhere they want, well, we'll just scratch I, the I, whole I'm section. Sorry, but I think it should include all of us. Yeah. Uh, you're going to get a lot of pushback on it if you don't allow it. And, and I mean, yeah, we're going to get pushback on just about everything we do. People have been, not, not people are used to being do. able to do it. Anything we, they want to do, if they do it with which is a problem. A problem. Well, I'm, 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 yeah, that's right. So all we can do is add homeowners and we do some well, not, That's not going to apply to any homeowners because 150 feet, I presume that's what you meant, still would knock out almost any home. That's correct. That's right. It's like what we do for adult entertainment. Half a mile away. I don't have a problem with it. I just want to make it. Well, how can we write that? I don't know. For a homeowner. Well, just put them in the in with contractors and everything else and make the restrictions the same for everybody. I just don't like it being different. I don't like the idea that a contractor can do something that a, a homeowner cannot do. All right. Why don't we do this? We're a long ways away from having 
something hashed out here. Why don't why don't we just for now, so we can get something passed next week, just reserve reserve this whole section on burning. Stop. <laughs> I would like us at least to consider if Carroll County Solid Waste is not in a position to haul off debris and limbs and yard waste that we maybe find a hauler that would haul it off. See, that, I would feel a lot better about completely banning burning if we gave somebody a yeah, reasonable option, option to do with piles of leaves in their yard. It'd be safer for everybody. And, and I just do not like it. One of these days, somebody's going to be smoking on the golf course, throw the cigar over the hill, and we're going to have a fire under the oak trees on five or seven or six we, or nine. We came nine. dangerously close a couple of years ago. They were burning leaves. The golf course maintenance guys were burning leaves on the driving range wow. down by the creek. And it got into the woods, and the fact that we had a hiking trail there that provided a fire break probably saved our ass. Well, and and, and that's a natural Excuse accumulation. Me. We're being recorded. I didn't mean. I, I know what you mean. But five. that's a natural accumulation up about five more than a natural. Accumulation. <laughs> there was a fire in the woods behind the fire department not too long ago. Yeah. Well. Well, for purposes of this, for the purposes of this um, workshop, I'm going to reserve the entire 508, right? Uh, the whole thing? No, just, no, just 508, 10, 10 and 11. Because those are the two paragraphs that deal with burning. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Hinder drainage. That's fine. That's fine. And by the way, I'm I'm writing a very I don't know, not very long, about a one pager to add to the building code about drainage. In 508, 12, is that where we're at? Yeah. Last sentence, vacant lot not owned in past tense or by said person, but it is not owned. Not yes. Owned. Yes, I already okay. Added that All right. in my copy. So your aunt changes it from O W E N to O W E N E D. Okay. There, there's something, something that that I need to figure out before we, before we actually pass this is that. Um, for some reason, and again, I copied this from another city, but they revisit fines and penalties over and over and over again. Because it has to do with each section. Yeah. They, they're assigning the penalty for each section so that it, it's severable. You know, if something happens yeah. to one section, it doesn't take away the rest of it. But it, 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 it generally says, like, like in this particular case, that any person convicted of violating this ordinance well, the ordinance is Title 11 or Title 5 or whatever. Um, so it probably should say this, you know, section this chapter, of whatever it's this chapter or something. If it's in every, if it's in every chapter, then it'd be this chapter. Yeah. Ch chapter 508. Yeah. 508. 508. Okay. Nuisance abatement. Right, I'm paging. Uh, I'm up to 50904. 50904, I don't understand that paragraph. I don't understand what it says. Coming back, I'm sorry, I'm catching up. In section 50902, C, I added words at the end of that to say, and filed with the Secretary of the City Planning Commission. So it's details of granting the modifications. So we get a record of it. 
it isn't just going to be the code enforcement officer doing his thing in his files, but to let the city planning commission know. Read the sentence after. I'm, I'm just adding the words. It says entered in the department files and then added and filed with the secretary of the city planning commission. So I suggest. Next. And C. Bible 92 C. At the very end of that. I had a, a question about 5092, which is just a little bit above that. And about the code enforcement officers paragraph. Just let me uh, let me finish up Lynn's thought on this. And and, and filed, filed with the secretary of the city planning commission. Rather than the than the chair, I thought, well, at least the secretary, because he's got the facilities to get it documented and that's his responsibility. So is 50902 the main place where the job of the code enforcement officer is defined? Um, no, this is part of pretty much. It kind of establishes the position of the city. Mm -hmm. yeah, their duties. And uh, it, it says they're duly sworn and authorized. Yeah. Does that mean they're sworn in? Because uh, the last sentence also says, duly sworn law enforcement officers of the yeah. county Yeah, so I, I need to revisit in. that. There, you know, the, most cities, the code enforcement officer is actually a sworn officer, meaning they, they can serve, they can issue the warrants and stuff like that, um, the, the citations. But they're not asked to act. Police officer, they don't have to go. Uh, they're a clean certification. I don't know, Danny. Danny explained it to me. Um, they're they're almost like a police officer. They're a sworn officer, and you know they have to you know they have to qualify to be a sworn officer. So they have to swear to uphold the. Constitution of the state of Arkansas, or something like that. Yeah, but but there's there are you know there are qualifications to be a sworn officer. They probably have to. You sign can't. It's not just. And I think there's actually training and 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 testing and stuff like that. That you know that that you're that that you know what you're doing when you're issuing a citation. Next, and, next sentence. And in our case, in our case, we would intend for the deputy, if it ever gets to the point of issuing a citation, that the deputy would actually serve that warrant or that citation because they are a sworn officer. So I need to revisit. Oh, so that this needs to be rewarded. Here. Here. I'm not so sure that we're going to require our code enforcement officer to be a sworn officer. Okay. Okay. Well, maybe not. Can we get can we get from Dan or whomever what those lines are? Yeah. It also said the code enforcement officer shall carry proper identification and present it for performing their and, duties. And I think that um, that that would be appropriate anyway, even if he is not a sworn officer, we would need to provide him with like some sort of card or badge you know, or something. And like business card. cards. Or a badge. Yeah, a badge. You know. Yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 All right, next. Okay, that's the that same title 904 violation. That, that sentence doesn't make sense. Which, which sentence? Far down. I don't know. Somebody said anything. I thought we were done with title 902. Still looking over. Okay. 
And what he's saying, I noted in uh, paragraph E in Minimum 2, bullet number 4, city's not capitalized. And most of this document has the word city capitalized. Yeah. Oh, I changed that. Okay. Right, right of entry. Where are we at? 50903. 50903. Can we go back up to D? I mean E. F. Is that is that even necessary? We can spell out that the frivolous. Well, who's the arbitrator of what's frivolous? I don't know. Maybe we should just. That's a bit ambiguous. It might establish expectations for the community to know that just because well, they that, file that's a what I was going to get to. Right. So we ought to put a penalty in there for frivolous claim. <laughs> oh, that's well, I know. I, well, they may not consider it frivolous when they file this stuff. Uh, are we the ones that determine what's frivolous? I don't know. I guess so. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, don't know. It's necessary. I guess it's debatable. Somebody's somebody else's city attorney thought it was worth putting in there. Right, because the next one talks about substantive evidence. Evidentiary value. You hear these are legal terms. I don't want to mess up that. Well, a lot of times the neighbor reports something, they don't have the evidence. They want you to go find the evidence. You know, the whole issue is frivolous is kind of in the eye of the beholder at times, too. Yeah, I, I, so I, I, that's ambiguous. So we just we'll deal with it, I guess. I guess this would be the excuse why somebody calls in a complaint and you don't do anything about it and say read paragraph E. <laughs> yeah. I think it gives the code enforcement officer some no way out in deciding whether or not it's worth pursuing. This is one of those things that will play out over time and you'll find out how it works or it doesn't work. There's no, yeah, if you all this stuff is going to be a one time. You know, it's going to apply. Of course, uh -huh. perfect is written. <laughs> That's why he's going to engrave it on stone. So we can... mm -hmm. Is his name Moses? Amos Moses. That's what it's called. Are we at three? Are we on three? Yeah, well, I'm on three. I have not been in this one. I'm three looks as good to me. But I'm... No comments from me. Up to four? I don't understand A. You don't understand 4A? Yeah. There's a definition of strict liability misdemeanor. I looked it up, but I don't remember what it is. It's a strict liability misdemeanor means that you didn't have to, you don't, you don't have to prove Intent. If if um, I think is what what it says that uh, if um, oh it's a liability if, whether they intended it or not exactly exactly okay so in B do we want to include the cost of the cost of prosecution yes I put that into okay. the Subject to confirmation from sure. Justin that we can do that. Or should, or should be. Yeah. Okay. I just think the penalty is a little bit low. I, I doubled them basically in my recommendation. In A, make it 100 bucks, and B, 250, and C, 500. We're serious about this. We should put a fine on there that's serious. It's like the ADEQ, it's $10,000 for dumping garbage in your front yard. That's the fine. 10 grand. I think they were wrong on that. I think it's twenty-five dollars. Okay. Because <laughs> I just read that. Okay. <laughs> no, I agree with Lynn. It says this is the same thing we had in the other one. It says each case is, shall be considered a separate offense and should be punished as such. So first day you do it, it's twenty-five dollars. The second day is fifty. And I suggest it be hundred for the second day. And I, I think that there's. Probably some general, general um, limitation. 
Well, I, I think that there's, I think in general, the, the judge has discretion as to whether or not to adjust the fines also. Yeah, and I, I thought, you know, we went to that district court that day, they, the fines were not very large. Well, depends on how many things you did wrong. That one poor girl, she <laughs> open container driving with a suspended license. Well, I know, but it, no proof of insurance. She was up to twenty five hundred bucks before she battered her eyes three times. So. And under B, are you going to put Chapter five hundred nine? So, Instead of any of the several others. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's uh, vibrator and say plays, buzz. plays tunes. <laughs> All right. Under C, citations implies. Our code enforcement officer would need a citation book. Okay. Are that are they? It depends on if they're issuing a citation for the deputy. Would the deputy use his own citation book or a um, city? Uh, um, city statute. Um, or whatever the rules of criminal procedure. They they um, it's actually written on a state citation, according to Bobby Ray. So I talked to. And he's the code enforcement officer in Eureka Springs. And he is a sworn officer because he's also a part time policeman. But uh, he says that uh, code enforcement violations like this, the actual citations are written on a state citation. So I, I need to find out more about that. I assume the citation book is pre numbered and Kind of have to account for each citation. There's copies that are part yeah. of the citation book that get filed sometimes. I don't know, but um, whenever we find identify who our code enforcement officer is, we'll I'm going to <laughs> recommend that that person job shadow either Bobby Ray or or um, hmm. the guy what's his yeah. name Kim something or other in Berryville. Um, They've been very, very uh, cooperative or so far. The fastest way to learn is just follow along with somebody and watch what they do. Appeals, nothing on that. Oh, yeah, I had a question on appeals. It kind of struck me strange when I read the way this was worded. If you plead guilty, can you can you go then and appeal your plea of guilty? Well, that made no sense. No contest. Yeah, no contest. Same thing. Yeah. That, that struck me as very strange. Uh, that's just, that's just if you plead wrong. guilty to a crime, no, 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 no. you don't get to appeal it, do you? Wow. Appeal a no contest either. Yeah. That's the same. Probably, I don't know. That's not the issue, right? I'll let it just be. Yeah. I mean, that's a lawyer's job. I'm not going to get out much. Like I said, somebody else is some Conway lawyer who wrote that. So. Licenses, sign permits, building permits. I inserted construction in front of electrical. Yeah. Took out and put another slash in front of plumbing. Yeah. Okay. I did that. Yeah. Okay. In section B, four four. Insert city in front of the state. Yep. Got okay. that. Thank you. 
this life stage. I understand. under transfer of ownership. It just says that you can't sell your house because somebody uh, because a big violation was uh, uncovered. <laughs> Yeah. 
uh, under uh, uh, paragraph G, um, Lynn brought up that uh, we want, I, I need to update this to reflect our actual uh, notification or publication, notification of how we notify the public. How we notify the public, thank you. So I'll update that section. And then under H, again, the cost of prosecution, I, same thing, J, same thing, K. Uh, Lynn raised the question, should we include that the court shall order that court costs and court and cost of prosecution be awarded to the city? Yeah, that's the first time I put it in and I went back and shortened it to the cost of prosecution. Yeah, because the court costs you're not going to get. Right. That goes to the judge and to cover the clerk's costs yeah. and stuff. But it's the same down mm -hmm. there. So the court costs and cost of prosecution. Okay. Anything on 50908? Mm -hmm. 09? This is where I inserted the definition. Oh, under bathroom. Uh, a room containing plumbing fixtures, including a bathtub or shower. What about the toilet and the sink? You know what? A, um, uh, is that different than a tub and shower? Yes, room? That's, a, that's a toilet. A toilet room? By definition. City is capitalized in most in every occurrence. It's well, there's a whole bunch of it. That's the yeah, uh, yeah. huh? thing we're trying to correct every one of them. Okay. Yeah. It implies the city, not right. a generic city. Right. At the bottom of page uh, 14, public way. I know that the city has no such streets. But they may. They may. Any street, alley, or similar parcel of land essentially unobstructed from the ground, the sky, it which is dated, dedicated, or otherwise permanently. Similar parcel of land essentially unobstructed from the ground to the sky, which is deeded, dedicated, or otherwise permanently appropriated for public use. I think so. Uh, what, what's your problem with that? We don't have any such streets that are deemed and dedicated or otherwise permanently appropriate for public use. We don't have any streets. The Not city yet. doesn't. Not yet. Okay. But we will, by the time Hawk Drive is paved. Okay. <laughs> All right. What I didn't want to do is open that big can of worms. Yeah. No. Well. They don't want worms to let you in. Yeah. I, okay, that's fine. I wonder if the fact that it doesn't say otherwise appropriated by the city for public use. I mean, we have streets out here that aren't appropriated by somebody for public use that are within our boundaries. Or they have a display of the I guess we could change that instead of for public use, we could say a permanently appropriated by the city. That way, if you know, if we pass an ordinance accepting something as a public way, then then it's by definition because it's used in five hundred eight, used in five hundred nine point eight under closing streets. 
Oh, by one million dollar acre. Well, we want to be able to close streets owned by Hudson if there were issues. But you know, you're talking about an emergency at a lot or a structure that you're trying to get under control somehow. Well, the district's in trouble here. Where is the term public way unit? I found it first in 509.08 under closing the streets, paragraph B. 508 on page 12. We just 12. talked about it a minute ago. Okay. 509.08 B. Ways adjacent to unsafe structures and prohibit the same from being utilized. Yeah, I mean, in practical terms, here, if, if there's a problem, the code enforcement officer is going to get with, you know, the fire chief and, and Kenny Gehart and put barricades up to close the street. So. I don't, I don't really see where. I will change the for public use to appropriated by the city. Um, I don't know. I'd have to go back and. Actually, kind of the way, way this is is it could be deeded, dedicated, or otherwise permanently appropriated by anybody. That's how it works. That's, that's why it's worded now. It seems like you'd want that because a lot of streets out here are going to be under the public use of the district. The city would still want to maintain Absolutely. the safety of Absolutely. the property along that public way. So yeah. I'd say don't um, change it. <laughs> I'll do it first. I, I, I think I'm going to just leave it for public use because I don't think that opens up any cans of worms. Okay. We, you know, we have an understanding that that um, the. The streets that the district retains responsibility for are licensed for public use or whatever. So, in practical terms, it won't be a problem, I'm pretty sure. On page 15, rubbish, mm -hmm. the last line, dust, another similar insert trash material. Yeah, I, I put that in there. Okay. Then on 15 is where I inserted the definition for trash. Yep. Okay. You got that? No. No, uncut weeds and grass is another one that's going to be a can of worms because there's. Are we going to include the um, you know, 2,500 unimproved lots in Holiday Island as being re required that they uh, cut the uh, grass? Bible uh, Ground 11 says it's only the lots adjoining developed lots. Is that what I, I believe? So I've, I've already tried to deal with that. Yes, I think it's somewhere it's in here. I know that's that's a Bible 911. Good luck on getting those. State property owners to do that. Yeah, I can. Can we, can we jump to another section now? Um, let's not. Let's just make sure that we go first. We're done with descriptions. Mm -hmm. Five hundred and ten. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Going down to D1. Um, no, where did that come from? That looks like that. Well, here, here's, a, here's an interesting thing with 509K. 
can be responsibility when you think of the, the situation up the street. Um, a person shall not permit another person to occupy the premises which are not in a sanitary and safe condition. So it sounds like the owner of a property mm -hmm. can, should prevent a tenant from occupying yeah, if it's in an unsanitary condition. <laughs> now, I wonder if that means if the tenant caused the unsanitary condition, if they still have the responsibility to prevent where, where are you? I'm on B. 509-10-B. Okay. Just under the definitions. Mm. It's the second sentence. Way back there. That's what it says. It says the owner is responsible for making sure the tenant keeps it clean. Or he can kick them out. Yeah. Lock them to the can. <laughs> Except that he can't. I, I, I don't have a problem with that. If the court enforcement officer says that this property is not habitable, um, then you can't rent it. Then the people have to, move, have to move. The landlord needs to deal with it. I don't think, you know, evicting somebody is difficult, but I don't think removing somebody from an unsafe or unsanitary condition is difficult. I hope so. I hope you know, I mean, I think we can talk about that. That, might, be, that might make the difference in the situation, yeah. Mm -hmm. Fact that they made the property uninhabitable. Right, right. right. Okay, where are we at? How far did we get here? I O nine eleven. I'm I'm, I'm, on, I'm still on five ten D um, one. Lynn inserted along a common street front. That's five eleven. Five eleven. Yeah. Oh, never mind. Five eleven. Okay. I'm all the way down to 511 D. What what's that thing about illegal dumping? That doesn't have anything to do with dirtying and draining the ground. And we covered that innumerable places before. Down and clear out 15 foot on each 
That, 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 that we need to stop. I mean, this whole paragraph is probably null and void. Okay. Because the property owners don't own any of the street cars. All of the property lines are well back from the street. So if we're if we're wanting people to if, as as written here, the the person would have to find wherever their lot line is and then mow 15 feet back from that. But there would still be tall grass between their lot line and the street. And that's possible, sure. Yeah. I was thinking more along the side borders of the lot, okay. which yeah. is called yeah. adjacent property. It says, mm -hmm. it says all of it. But it doesn't define it. It says 15 foot buffer all This is not the talking line. about the street front of the. Mm -hmm. Uncomplied property. I'm talking about it being adjacent to developed property, mowing along the sidewalk, high property down there. Me, 15 feet won't make any difference in the appearance of the property. Well, remember, you got this conway, which you know, there's not many trees in the conway yeah. property. You don't have a, a whole lot of. Um, Non-resident owners either. Yeah. This, this section here, this, this section D, a lot of this is mine. Because I was trying to come up with a way of dealing with people mowing, you know, con, uh, con, uh, keeping the weeds down on, on their lot, but not without requiring everybody that owns a lot, you know, like me, I have two lots on Holiday Island Drive, you know, it doesn't, there's no health or sanitation issue with the grass growing up on my lots. Um, so I, I don't want to make everybody that's got a lot out in the woods, you know, mow the grass on their lot, but I do want to be able to get some control over the developed area. Yeah, so you drive along Lakeside, and uh, on the west end of it, there's a lot in the middle of the, all those developed lots, and the grass is four feet high. Mm -hmm. The 15 feet would at least give us a buffer for those weeds and control of penetrating into the developed lot. And that's what the 15 feet's for. It helps. It helps. It doesn't prevent it all. But still, you're, like you said, you're going to have 15 feet on the left and 15 feet on the right, and in the middle it's four feet tall. Yeah. It's totally own, surrounded by developers. If I don't own the adjacent lot, I would just make it deal with the owner of the other lot to mow that 15 foot buffer for him. You could do that. Well, what about a situation which I would be in is that the, the, the lot that I bought next to my developed property is there's not grass, there's like right. big oak it's trees. It's trees. Trees and cedars. Trees and grass. This is talking about grass and weeds, not talking about cedars and trees. You'd have to mow around those trees. Huh? You'd have to mow around those trees. Just like mow around them. Yeah, if there was grass growing, but. And there's a lot for sale over on Table Hot. Would I have to do that? Yeah, I got one too. I'm still hung up on the fact, though, that that the district actually owns the land. You know, in most cases, um, well, you know, probably a good what you 15, do? 20 feet back from the edge of the road. What are you going to do with the assets? They don't you make know, nothing. So we're going to have to involve the district in a discussion about what we're going to require for vegetation control. Shoulder control. It, you know, it's, 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 you know, it's kind of been a little bit of a pet peeve of mine for a long time with the district, even when I was on the board, that we spend so much, um, so many, expend so many resources um, mowing all of Holiday Island Drive. All of the rural part of Holiday Island Drive is manicured, you know, mowed multiple times a, a summer with a riding lawnmower. But then, you know, other, Parts in Holiday Island, you know, never get the ditches cut at all. And you go up, you know, to the really populated area, 
and unless the neighbors mow the vacant lot next door to them, yeah, they, they, they don't, you know, the district doesn't do anything with them. So what makes Holiday Island Drive so special that it gets manicured and everything else gets ignored? Well, because just about everybody that comes in or out of uh, Holiday Island comes down Holiday Island Drive. That's your first impression of the city. Yeah, but they, <laughs> they drive past several lots with grass well, on the other side right, right, right up to the road. But very few people drive past, you know, Lockalusa Drive. And that that's the that's the rationale that's always been offered by the district is that it's you know it's we're all it's it's where everybody drives that comes into Holiday Island. Well, they do the same thing. With look with nice. They do the same but, thing with Woodsdale. I mean, I think you have to realize the limitations on the resources. And, um, for purposes of our of our. And weed grass and weeds ordinance, we are going to have to consider though the fact that the district owns a lot of the land that we're talking about. And um, I don't want to pass an ordinance that they can't deal with. I have to drop one more thing too, but it excludes the suburban improvement district from having to maintain those areas when we've got a situation with bamboo on the corner up to the asphalt on the road can't see around the corner and when we had a fire in our driveway and in our garage the fire truck drove to the other end of bandy drive because they couldn't see down our street wow. well we do have in our ordinance a sight line for corners that we can deal with this bamboo problem on that. And corner. it's, I think, we can deal from with the that. position of the water meters, I'd say almost all of this is on district property. Hmm. Um, because I assume water it. meters are on the district property. They're right on the property line. And they're on the inside of the bamboo. Yeah. That bamboo um, problem corner can be covered with our site line problem. That should be addressed. And bamboo. We're, we're not going to be able to hammer this out before next week's city council meeting because of the fact that I, I need to get uh, the district involved in this. Yeah. So I'm just going to you know, put section D as being reserved for now okay. and we'll get back into it. Now it's after lunch. Do we want to keep going or do we want to? Um, take a break and, and you can uh, people can feed me any questions they have or comments or updates for the rest of this. I can mark up a draft with the suggested changes in yellow or red okay. and send it back to everybody and still maybe try to knock out a, a some, you know, at least a portion of this that we can pass next week. That, 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 well, that's what the white land did the uh, zoning, what are the zoning rates? Yeah, yeah zoning, that worked well with highlighting changes. And yeah, I, I, the, the format I used was whatever I added is in yellow highlight. And, and I, red, red is my concern. So if, if, everybody, if, I, if I sent this version to everybody, and I think I did, I, had, I highlighted the changes in yellow too. Okay. Did you, did you get that? I didn't get one. I didn't get any. I don't think you sent my copy to people. I, mean, I didn't get a copy of mine. I don't think I did. I, think, I don't think it got posted on the website. No, it's definitely not on the website. If you if none of you have anything yet highlighted in yellow, then then you don't have the copy with Wynn's edits. But send me your edits and your or your questions, and I will add them in and highlight them in yellow and redistribute it to everybody. So are we gonna schedule a follow-up workshop or something? 
Do we know next Tuesday? No. We're going to do it at the regular meeting, right? But if he doesn't get it hammered out with the, uh, with the orders, it's got to be posted by Friday. Right. Right. Or he just posts the ordinance up to the point where we stop. You just do an ordinance with that stuff that we covered. And thought they had the other five amendments that night? Or with a different ordinance? I think we can, we can anything we can add to the, 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 the codes to a few ordinances. So, you know, oh, okay, so just adopt as? Yeah, okay. through 508 or something, and then, you know, beyond that could be another ordinance at a later date. That's what I'm doing with the old code, adding a whole bunch of stuff to it. We, you know, we'll prioritize for next week's meeting. We'll prioritize the parts that cover the the imminent, persistent problems with you know with property, and uh, do some of these that are lesser issues like vegetation control, maybe to another workshop and another ordinance. You could also schedule a special meeting after the regular meeting to continue the subject. Yeah. All right, so we're leaving off on rodent stopping point is rodent arborage. All right, motion to adjourn the workshop. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, Jerry made the motion, Lynn seconded it. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 We adjourn.